Mr. Buzz, basically what we're here for, it's my understanding of the night you were arrested that you wanted to talk to the detectives, you wanted your lawyer there, and there were some technical difficulties of getting everybody together, and they had to go serve a search warrant right. on another murder case. So I called Mr. Rowland and see if you still want to talk. You know, we always want to give people an opportunity to be heard and tell us what they, they want to tell us. Uh, and, uh, you know, discuss your situation with you. Mr. Cotham is going to be back <clears throat> probably tomorrow or the next day. He's waiting extradition, so he's going to be back down here to possibly meeting with us this week. So that's kind of where we are. Obviously, you know, you've been charged with first degree murder. I'm sure Mr. Owens advised you it's a potential capital case because of the murder for hire situation. So uh, that's the situation you're currently in. Uh, court can hold you without bond in this case if we determine we're going for the death penalty. So that's kind of where we are. Uh, I don't know what information you want to give uh, these detectives. Uh, that's just kind of where, where we are yeah. and what you want to we want to open it up and let you tell us what you were wanting to tell initially. Right. And, that, and that's why, like I said, on my, you know, and he's, you know, you may, you know, ask me for advice, but, you know, his story's been the same all just like I've said. So, I mean, you want to... Well, the night we were your, speaking, we were going to kind of, you had a lot of things that you wanted to open up, kind of show me, let me ask some questions if I had any. Mm -hmm. And I kind of thought that might be what we were doing today, is definitely because that day I said I'm more than willing to cooperate any way I can. I'm not really not sure what to say unless. Well, it's the only instruction that he's, he's been dealt with. I don't care if good, bad, or indifferent. To me, he lied to exactly. and his mom, but not to you. Uh, uh, you know, I think your lawyer told you as a lawyer, I, these guys can mislead you a little bit. They can in certain situations I can't. So what I what I tell you about the case is pretty much what I know the facts are as of this time. I, I try not to misstate anything, but. Uh, Right now, you look to me like you're in a pretty difficult situation. I don't have any question at all that Mr. Coughlin killed your wife. None. Okay. I've tried a lot of cases. I've been doing this 34 years. I've tried a lot of capital cases. I've tried a lot of murder cases. And I know a pretty good case when I see one. Uh, of course, uh, that's the situation. I'll say we have some motives for you to kill your wife. You're going through a divorce. I know there were custody issues involved, insurance money involved, her cooperation in arson investigation was involved. So, so those are motives right out of the, the gate that obviously makes you the main suspect in the case. You can understand that. Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, we also have witnesses where you threaten your wife make statements you're going to kill your wife. Okay. Uh, we also have statements your wife has made to certain people that may or may not be admissible in court. They can come in sometimes, they can't come in sometimes, but where she said that you threatened her, she was scared of you, you made a statement, she didn't quit messing with you, uh, that, uh, that it was coming, which can be perceived as a pretty Definite threat. I see. Those may or may not come in. Uh, so, we also have a witness that saw you around her house the night before she was murdered, which I think you've denied to the police. Absolutely, yes, sir. Okay. Well, this witness knows you, knows who you are, and reported the police right away. They've seen you the night before around the house. So, you know, that would be something, but that's, I'm just telling you what. I You're understand right, the proof against you, okay. yes, sir. and this is a little early to do this, but in a case like this, it, it's pretty crucial early on who understands what's going on, and, and if one person decides they want to cooperate, the first person to the trial usually gets, I, gets there. So I openly I, I told these guys, if it was Corey, I'll do all I okay. can to help out. So I'm just I don't to understand in the least bit what it would be. Okay. So, obviously, if you selected Corey to do the killing, and he wasn't—he might have been a good arsonist, but he wasn't a very good murderer. Uh, and he made some big mistakes. 
We know he's your best friend or one of them. We know he's your business partner. We know we got Texas phone calls. We got a bunch of stuff. There's not going to be pictures. I mean, you name it. There's no question you're going to be tied like a twin to, to, to Corey. Uh, we know he had the murder weapon. How do we know that? Because he was stupid enough to get it from his stripper girlfriend who stole it from her husband. Her husband reported it stolen before the murder. Uh, just for a second, I'm going up about something just off the record. Okay, but, sure. I mean, uh, I just, yeah. it's, it's, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. It's I'm just kind of. You just want to talk? Yeah, just it, it, Tim, talk, talk for a second. Or me. <laughs> And the way we know that he had the murder weapon was he messed up and left the shell casing. He picked up his casings, but he didn't find one because it rolled up against the wall. Very distinctive type of ammunition. It's kind of green colored. It's cheap. It's sold at Academy Sports, which we're, we're checking out all of Academy Sports now, watching their, their tapes at the time. We know he got the weapon to see who, if anybody, bought that, that ammunition there. We haven't uh, had time to do all that yet. That shell casing was taken. They then went to Lawrence County. And yes, the husband had test fired that weapon several times prior to being stolen. They found the shell casings, exact match. And not only did he take it from the stripper girlfriend, but he took it over to a friend of his and showed it to him, a high standard Glock, not a high standard high, high 40, point, not, not Glock, but high standard 40. In, uh, high point, nine millimeter. Nine millimeter, okay, I got it. I don't know about guns anyway, so. Okay, but anyway. <clears throat> And the guy even shows him how to clean the gun. Not only that, but then the idiot puts it on his cell phone, the gun, along with the same green ammunition laying beside it that's recovered from the crime scene. So you can see that's pretty strong evidence of the murder weapon. He uh, then gives a bullshit alibi to the police about he was in Portland, Tennessee or somewhere, which obviously from his cell phone records wasn't true. He pulls in at the scene in his own car. We have witnessed and saw a silver SUV leaving the scene time of the murder. He pulled in and evidently he screeched his tires because he left a very distinctive tire print. It's consistent with the tires on his car. Uh, he was so stupid even though he told the police his alibi in Portland, Tennessee, he was so stupid as he saw a friend on Old Hickory Boulevard, just a short distance from the murder scene. He called him on the phone and said, hey, I just passed you. I saw you on such and such. Of course, his cell phone records corroborate that call. Uh, his cell phone records obviously corroborate he was at the scene of the murder. His cell phone records also corroborate that he called you right after the murder. He spoke a number of times that day. Yeah. His cell phone records also show that where he picked your wife up and started following was the exact place that she brought the child for you to get visitation so that he was waiting at the exact location you met the child and it shows him pinging different towers right, right as he goes to the murder scene he loved his cell phone and his cell phone is what's going to take him out and then he makes a mistake of taking her iphone her iPhone's Roman. So his, her iPhone goes right down the road with Corey, with his cell phone, which he's admitted the police never leaves his side, and goes right down the road with his cell phone as they leave together, right where he makes the call to his friend. So the cell phone records are pretty devastating. We also know on the day he was arrested that, that uh, the phone records of his stripper girlfriend called him to tell him the police were looking for her. 
and the information that they'd given her roommate. And then as soon as he hung up from her, he called you. Because we were following you at the time while she picked up the phone. Yeah, you guys were behind me, of yeah. course. So you were the first person he called when he got that information. And then you erased that off your phone before the police could find it. We know I that. erased it, he called me? Yes. Okay. And then the U.S. Yeah. Marshals, what they said. Yeah, and the U.S. Marshals, when they were coming in on him, he's on the phone. And he says, call Tim, call Tim. Talking to a stripper girlfriend, I think, from the phone records we've got. Uh, so, which girl? Miss Stripper. Miss So, we also know he promised his daughter a Mac Pro, which was taken from your wife when she was murdered. That was before the murder. He promised her to get her a Mac Pro. Uh, he provided a bogus alibi, which is his, his roommates have said in no way was he there. Of course, we know he wasn't there based on his cell phone records. Uh, we know you all had plans to go to Barbados together to leave the country. Hey, I think that, yeah, if you want to talk, talk you know, well, that, yeah. Barbados was the thing. I'd just gone a couple of months ago with the young lady I'm dating. Beautiful country. And uh, I told him, yeah, I'd love to go back, and he had to go with us. And I don't know of any plans to leave the country. My son's here. I couldn't go anywhere with him. So. Well, I'm just telling you that. Well, yes, sir, I understand. I understand. <clears throat> I understand. Okay. He also received a text message from his girlfriend, who he'd obviously called that night uh, in Kentucky. So he had three of them he was bouncing around with, and what we tell maybe more, but at least three he was spinning living with around the boy saying that uh, she loved it when a plan came together and how good it had all worked out for him. That was after the murder. Well, she told, I mean, I, mean, I, don't, I, mean uh, I just don't understand. I mean, I don't understand where the money's going to hurt. Uh, that's, I don't, I mean, that's to me personally. It's just uh, her indicating she was... I mean, I can understand her believing that and Corey believing that, mm -hmm. but like I said, I mean, the seed comes out. Also, physical evidence recovered from his car. There's a container that the gun was in. Not that we need that. There has been a hair recovered, two of which appear to be female. And they haven't been, we haven't got results back. I can't say whether well, that's your wife's hair. One of them was located where you put your foot on the gas. So there's a good, strong possibility you may have picked that up in the house and brought it out. He also wore latex gloves, which he supposed evidently the way they ripped inside out took them off and left them in his truck. So the DNA testing is being performed on those. So there appeared to have been a struggle with your wife, so it's possible her DNA is on those gloves. We don't have the results back. Not that I think we're really going to need them against the court. But, uh, I'll do without a doubt she had struggled to hell and back to try. So that's kind of where we are right now is the evidence is, is extremely strong, uh, I think. And uh, you're being tied to him the way you are, your phone calls and your motive and everything. Uh, in all likelihood, I don't know whether we'll try you folks together yet or not. We'll make that decision down the line. But uh, in, uh, we know no other particular motive Corey could have for killing your soon-to-be ex-wife. I don't know what they know. Explain to them, you know, explain how you actually ever met Corey, you first knew you. Was alive. I mean, no. I mean, Corey actually I mean, knew Veronica person. before she knew, he knew me. Mm -hmm. She uh, worked at a place called Reaper's Plus over off of Murphy Road, and her boss was Corey's cousin. And then I met Corey sometime later through another friend that owned a video game store. It used to be in Rivergate, and at one time or the other, at that point, we uh, had met at a barbecue outside, and my wife and I were there with a couple of them in the house, and he came in and saw her, and then saw me, and. From there, I mean, he'd been house sitting for us whenever we went back to her painting ladies in, uh, in Italy. He stayed with us for weeks while they remodeled a house he was living in. I mean, he's been a big picture in our life from the very beginning. That's kind of why I'm so. I don't understand why any of this would have happened this way. Well, I can tell you from what I've seen of 
Corey, he's a true sociopath. Well, I, I don't know if you read the court order. He showed you about his background. Or no, I, I sh the opinion. And yeah, I mean, you, opinion. and I didn't tell him about you because I didn't want to plan. You know, it's, it's better about Corey's background and all that stuff. How you knew it before I showed you his record, and that's just Tennessee. I don't know what he's got outside of Tennessee. Got a right conviction in Oregon. I mean, he had mentioned stuff. But he's got I mean, children by four different women, and all of which he's beaten. Yeah, up. that part I know. Of. I didn't know he beat them all up, but I knew he had kids from multiple wives and things. <clears throat> my Corey's done a lot of things with us. My new girlfriend in my house with my mom. I, I just—he's always been a big part of our family before and then after he came back. But since the divorce, though, he's more laxed on to you. And we Veronica actually met and the Corey, courthouse. Right, Veronica and Corey separated themselves, and Corey stayed with himself. He hasn't seen Veronica. In a long time since the divorce started, and that he's only been over there in, in March. He went by looking for you, and that was it. And then from the Facebook, the text messages, the cell phone records, the pictures of Beach Haven Winery and the other spots, I mean, you and him are. Openly, you know, he's been around me since he came back in the picture and found me. Yeah. I can't deny that he works with me every day. Well, so y'all are fixed at the hip almost. And that's well, and, and I can't deny that. All of a sudden, you're your wife's skill, and we've got overwhelming evidence he did it. Uh, and also the fact that he tracked her from where you were meeting to get the child. How would he possibly know to be there if you didn't give him that information? That I have no idea, sir. I mean, I meet my wife the same time every Sunday at the same exact location. And why would he call you right after he kills your wife? I have no idea, sir. I mean, to be honest, I, I mean, just, we talked that day about a multitude of things. I'm just telling you where it's headed. Right, I understand. And it's not good. I mean, we talked a multitude of times that day about getting the boys together to go watch a movie. I think his younger boy's 12 and mine will be nine and uh, doing some things like that. But other than that, talk about the girls that he was with the night before. Well, there were a bunch of them. He's got an amazing cell phone. That's I, sure. I've lived a life vicariously for Corey. He's <laughs> yeah, he's, uh... and, and knowing Corey, once he figures out that needle's going in his arm, He's going to roll like a giant whale. I, I mean, if there's anything I can do to help, of course I want to, because this guy no, killed. It's not to help us, to help you right now, because you're staring down the barrel of the death penalty right now with pretty strong evidence against you. I understand. I'm just not sure well, what my, I can do. I my mean, best buddy went over and killed my wife on a Sunday at noon when I just happened to be out getting exact receipts, which I kept with the police. Just, well, well, you need to, need to explain your relationship with Gordon. I mean, well, that's it. I mean, since he came well, back I mean, and found me, he's been there every day. I mean, he works every day with me, um, just to kind of hang out and be there. Work. I mean, I, you know, I'm the, well, I'm, been, I'm sorry, construction work. I'm, well, I'm Corey, a modeling you contractor. Talk, you did that right for your arrest? To be honest, sir, I didn't know that I spoke to him. I, I don't recall. I mean, I was you know, messing around with my little boy. So right before you were arrested, talking on the phone. Right before I was arrested yeah, the right, other day? they were right behind you. Why you talking on the phone? I think I was trying to talk to my sister. I don't remember speaking to Corey. I talked to him that morning. Yes, sir, I did. But before they caught me, I don't remember speaking to Corey. Well, Honest to God's truth, I do not remember speaking okay. to Corey. Cell phone records will show it, even though you raced and we've got hers and yours at home. Well, you I, I'm, well, I'm the first one to admit, in my phone, when Corey called in, it shows restricted. You can't, I can't erase those from my phone. Yeah. I, I can't erase it, so it'll definitely show. If he called, it'll show a restricted call, but I don't. I didn't speak to Corey. How many times a day would you speak to him? If we worked together, probably three or four still even. If we didn't work together, I don't know, it might be five or six, depending upon what we were doing. Why would he tell a stripper that gave him the murder weapon to call you? That I you have no her? idea, sir. Did you know her? Who is she? Yeah. I, I mean... Little skinny girl. She'd been around once or twice with him, I'd seen her. But other than that, not really. I don't know her, no, sir. But I, no, sir. I'd... Did you know you, she lived in Lawrence County? Is that? She lived here now. Oh. She'd been living. He's been shacking up with her from time to time. I mean, to be honest, there's, I don't know why this would have happened. I'm surprised. Corey was with me all the time. Now, and after work, we were never together, except for if we were like the Saturdays we went to Beach Haven and stuff like that. But other than that, 
Wait, is there wasn't Beach anything in that the winery or whatever? Mm hmm. Beach Haven's the winery. Well, no dinners after work? We had some lunch. The photograph you had was one day at lunch out yeah, there at Hunter Oaks. There's others. At the Logan's. I mean, it, it's like this. I mean, you he know, was with me all day long. I know. I mean, he'd show up from work and he'd leave after work. Right. Based on what we have, you know, as far as the statements and stuff on you, based on the evidence that we've gathered for Corey, right. and everything that we have that shows that he's a shooter, that he's the murderer, and then his link to you, you know, plus everything else, it, what I think Tom's trying to tell you is that it just doesn't look good. I understand that. And if you wanted to have an opportunity to talk and to explain things, now's the time. And obviously you're I think trying to say what he wants to explain. I mean, that's what he doesn't know. Right. I mean, he he's not dumb. He knows he's going to be the first and last suspect. We talk about that. And you know, married to her for 16 years. You tell about your whole course of your marriage. I mean, like you talk, well, talking to me. I mean, was this the first time she cheated on you? Second? Well, no, or this is the second time she cheated on me. But I mean, you know. <clears throat> well, you had a fiance yourself, so it right. like you. Well, no, no, that's it. We had made it to the point to where we were finalizing stuff and I was surprised that we weren't divorced last year because I thought in fact I had told her uh, back in I guess no end of June or July of last no year insurance yeah. okay. that I thought she was going to be married last fall sometime to this guy was your insurance current on for you for is mine beneficiary? oh yes sir the three um, thousand. I had a late payment that I had sent in but it was sent in last week so mine was current I kept mine up it was past the grace period. You got current up to July that he lapsed it. Yeah, you, you, and then you brought past the grace period. Which well, all I know is I called into him. They told me to send a check overnight, and I went to the post office and sent it in express mail, I believe it was. Well, she, and uh, I had until Saturday sometime or whatever to do it. Past Saturday? No, beforehand. Oh, okay. This all happened before all this other. You were a beneficiary for her, 550000 right? That's what I've been told, yes, sir. You didn't know that? No, sir. And it's the same thing I told them. The last set of papers that her attorney had sent over to me in the very beginning of it, page two or something, had stated that we didn't have to name each other beneficiary, I which was fine with me. Right. But that was fine because if I'm going to be with this lady over here, and yeah. I'd rather give my money to someone else. That's once the divorce was fine. Right. But then, you know, again, it was one of the statements that I asked, is it, is it this way or is it not? And I hadn't got an answer yet. And you were in financial trouble, weren't you? Um, I'm not the most well off, no sir, but I had most of my money wrapped up into a house that I was trying to sell. So, but I had work going, so I was making do. You had a lot of liens on your house? No sir. You did? I had one bank note on one, the other one was an empty lot, um, which Metro had torn down, and denied me my permit had torn down after the fire. Um, and on the other house, there was nothing. We bought it clear and free. I had an outstanding loan I was paying off, but the house itself had nothing against it. So no, sir, there were no outstanding loans. The property, property records show 48 liens. 48 liens on my property? Yes, on your properties. Well, I don't know where they came from, because as far as I know, there's nothing. The house in Severe Court, we bought with cash. Um, and we didn't buy it. I bought it in December of last year. in that house? Um, well, it may be Corey's... Uh, one of the mother's children um, was there before because they got kicked out of their place and I told her, sure, y'all can stay here for a few weeks, get on your feet, and then it's, you know, while it's being sold, but go ahead. And as I understand, she was still there the other day when my in-laws went over, or not my in-laws, but uh, my aunt and uncle went over there. But she yeah, should be still out. There. Well, she should have been out last week. So in February, had an agreement with you for her to stay there. Well, they did, and I informed them that that was over and ready to go even before all this other started too because I had people wanting to come look at it again. After Veronica's murder, why did you try to distance yourself from Corey and you tell him that you couldn't see him, you couldn't talk to him? I haven't. It's in text messages and emails. I, I haven't told him that because he even came to work after this. I mean, he was at the work site with me. I mean, we met and we walked through Home Depot together, in fact. There's people there that yeah. can verify they've seen us together. Yeah, that was a couple of weeks after. But immediately after you told him, that, uh, he got rather upset with you about why you couldn't see him. Why well, you I told him I couldn't talk to him as many times a day as I was because we were doing some other stuff, but I didn't distance myself by any means. At that point, I had all this other stuff and my son to deal with. And Corey was mad that you didn't give him a heads up about the attorneys coming and uh, having a meeting with us. 
I don't know about that, but. Uh, I'm not well, trying to disagree with myself. Yeah, I mean, this is just my own curiosity. Was there a tap, uh, a federal tap on this phone? That's the other thing. And, is that what can't I mean, tell you that right now? Well, I mean, that's, that, you know, uh, that's just my speculation. Yeah. But, uh, and for that, right. you, I mean, just like you told me, and you know, for this work time, you probably heard me say a similar thing. You know, did you ever say things offhand around people? Oh, well, I openly included. admit, yeah, there were times that we had big arguments. I'd make a couple of seconds. This was time and time and time back. Big arguments. Well, Brock and I had in the very beginning of this thing a number of times. What kind of statements? Well, I made a statement that uh, I wish something would happen to her. But this wasn't recent. This was last year. We were getting along really well now. We were at the end of this thing. I mean, I'm the first to admit that, you know. God, I you weren't concerned about her taking your child and moving to California? No, sir. Because we had actually put it in the documents that she would, she felt even that it was his best benefit to stay here, that she wouldn't take him and go anywhere. I mean, left California to come live here. Mm -hmm. What's your, what, what do you know? I mean, as far as, did y'all get along, did y'all ever speak? I mean, they don't know. Well, the very first time I met him, I shook his hand, patted him on my shoulder, and told him thank you. You know, that two times in one marriage was two times too many, and good luck. That as long as he took care of her and took care of my son, then I was never going to interfere with nothing. Why did you meet him? Did you want I him? wanted to make sure that the man who was going to spend a lot of time with my son was going to be somebody I could trust. And I told, I even told Veronica in the same conversation I was stating earlier when I said I thought she'd been married last fall, that if a man says he'll leave his wife and he actually doesn't come out of here, He's a man of some kind of character, at least. So if a week before she was murdered, Veronica went to a friend and was extremely upset, said she was scared that she threatened her, she would have just been making that up? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Why would she do that? I you have no clue. Lost. I have never, never threatened Veronica. Never you threatened You never Veronica. told anybody you, you were going to shoot her? No, sir. No, no, sir. You never told anybody you were going to drown her in the swimming pool? No, sir. No. Okay. I promise. Never. What the, those offhand comments? I mean, oh, what? Well, yeah. Well, one time I, this, I, I one time I, the last letters. I mean, it, it, it just seemed weird that they were including trying to get her to. You know, so, I don't know. They're trying to wrap it up, and everything's not agreement. So, so. did you ever litigate anything during the course? No. Good? No, I mean, it was everything pretty much between us until well, they just made you a final offer and said if you didn't accept it, they're going to litigate, right? Scored to her lawyer, and I don't think you I don't it. remember hearing anything about litigation. I'll be honest, and I can look at the paperwork I've got to, with John Michael, but I don't remember ever hearing the words litigation. Yeah. We talked the, about mitigation lawyer, at one time. The lawyer said, this is it, final offer, either that or we just litigate the case. I've never seen any of that. And she would say that. She was dead before you either accepted the offer or... No, sir, I've never seen any of that. In fact, I'm the one that sent back the final thing, saying the same thing I said from the very beginning. If we can keep it the way it is, where we have I have alternating Saturdays, we're good to go. Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of folks lying out there. Well, it sounds to me like there are too. I mean, I've told the officers where I was the Saturday night before, and I'm sure that that the young lady I stay with can verify that. Absolutely. In fact, I know of one lady who was there the night before with her that told me she was there that night finishing up the books for the uh, project who came and picked the books up from the house. All those books that were spread out in the pantry area from the show they were doing. Mm -hmm. She said she spent most of the evening there that evening working on it. Why would Corey kill Veronica? I have no idea. No idea. But like I said, if I can find out or I can do anything, I'll be glad to be the first one to help you. Up you guys get him. I have we, no we idea why him. he would have done this. We got him. We got him. Well, I believe that, but you understand what I'm saying. You acted like when the lawyer just kind of pushed paperwork towards you that that was new about the insurance. Two days later, we got a tape phone call that the insurance company tape recorded you trying to file the insurance claim. I did call. But the court, you just acted like you didn't know anything about the insurance. I court. didn't know. And in fact, on my, on my divorce attorney's suggestion, he said you need to call and check on this stuff. He said it may have a funeral clause in it that would help cover. I paid for the funeral, in fact. That would help pay for the funeral, possibly. You need to get your things in line for all this stuff. I did it at his be at his suggestion. 
I didn't know about it. I mean, I called, I'm the one that called the medical examiner, and after that, <clears throat> it was a touchy situation, so I did do some of it, obviously a touchy situation. And I uh, was out the house with him, uh, you know, cleaning it up, so I bring everything out there. And he had talked to me, and actually, I think I told you, because you asked me, and he, you know, I was just, you know, keep on keeping on, but. Uh, what about who who did the why is the life insurance all that why is there differences in the values and stuff? Do you know? Well we had a minimum that we were, had agreed upon was three hundred fifty thousand. No, I'm talking That's about the O five. Do you, are there any policies other than these in O five? Not that I'm aware of, but she handled all the financial stuff. And that's I think that state attorney got those. You'll see all the correspondence addressed to her. Did you is it when we looked at these the other day, is that the first time you'd ever seen or Oh yeah. Or, now, 05 is when she started to move into a whole new category of uh, producing. Her income started to go up. So you all never discussed in life insurance at all? Well, yes, sir. In the very beginning, when our son was born, we started talking about we needed to get it in place as soon as we could. So you're saying you didn't know she had $550,000? No, sir. That you would get if she died no, while sir. you were married? And the last time I thought anything was when the divorce paper stated that we needed a minimum of 350 which we both agreed on that point in front of the divorce attorney. Did you know about your policies? I knew how much your policies were for. Well, I assumed it was, that it was the three fifty, but I didn't even know about mine. I've never even really seen what it was for. In fact, there was another one. I don't know whether it's in effect or not, but there was another one without the policy at one point on the end. I don't know. There were three policies. I think that was the total. I thought. Well, there were three policies, and actually, she has them typed out. Right? Said she used. She's playing the rights, but she. I believe. Is she ain't all about receipts and everything? Absolutely. But that's why she handled the finances, because I'm not good with it. Um, the nine phone calls made between you and Corey before she was murdered, like the hour and a half before she was murdered, do you, do you know what y'all talk, talked about? Man, he talked about two girls he hooked up with the night before. We mentioned about the kids maybe trying to get together. I don't know, I just got a new phone. I remember a couple of times that dropped for some reason we called back. But that's just kind of shooting the bull. I mean, we do that all the time in the mornings, especially. You remember what uh, the conversation was at 1220 when he called you? 1220? Mm -hmm. No, sir. I, I mean. What about 1222 when he called you? No, sir, because I don't know that I even spoke to him. Yeah, I think it was 1253 was the next one. Another one, and there was some more four-ish. Yeah. I mean, I'm just. But he could have been calling the phone too, and I could have been downstairs with Benjamin or anything. I mean, I. Whether you notice know, the number really, range. when you copied the phone that night, you erased it. It erased the SIM card. So right. at point, when when you, I think the night he was in print, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. No, we didn't do anything we at didn't, that yeah. point. All right. Well, he he pulled it. He. Because when you called me, I know because I checked. You called him on the same number right after you hung up with me when you said your phone was dead. Right, when he, he, he gave his phone to Uncle Lenny, he, he gave his phone to Uncle Lenny, and then Uncle Lenny, he wanted his phone, he was gonna show us the phone calls. And so we got the phone from Uncle Lenny, and gave it to Tim, Tim started pulling it up, Tim said, I wanna show you something, they're all gone. Well, that's it. I mean, I, that's yeah, it. But I, mean, I also we didn't, asked. We didn't anything. Well, we I didn't know, download I, well, anything. I mean, it's all, it, well, no, it I mean, I actually one asked one at that time if you done something because I said you got a similar phone that I've got. And what would make them all erase? Right. I mean, my yeah, old call log, which was probably two or three hundred calls at that point on a brand new phone, even. So. The insurance policies. Do you know how many different policies? I mean, you just see it. Your health and her health, I know she used to smoke and stuff like that, but as far as, were you denied coverage? Or no. do you even know? Well, no, was. I mean, as far as I know, we've never was. been denied coverage. Well, I mean, Veronica smoked until we met and then she quit right afterwards. I think the records with the state attorney will show that she took, I think there was a previous place, I didn't show it, uh, that she had tried to get insurance and they wouldn't take down because of his family history of diabetes and stuff like that. Like I said, sorry to hold back on you. But. Okay, that, 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 I think that explains the difference in the policy. They wouldn't give him insurance, period. They gave him more. They gave her. Five fifty. Five fifty. She had five fifty. But that nine hundred thousand policy on him was four hundred some odd dollars, three hundred and thirty dollars a month or something. I don't know how long. Yeah, if, if Tim was murdered by Veronica's best friend, obviously we'd be looking at her for that too. Well, and that could have been Corey too. That's that's. Um, you, you see mine. Well, I mean, Corey has already distanced himself from Veronica. 
when all this went down. I think it was long before the divorce, and that's what, what's so weird about it. Right. Yeah, long before the divorce, they became best friends. I mean, we can show that. Me. And then the best friend murdered Veronica. Obviously, we're looking oh, well, at we're, the connection. We're not idiots. I mean, and that's, uh, that's all. Right. That, I don't know. I mean, but I mean, and also, we can text this world. about what a big deal he had going down. He was going to come into a lot of money, stuff like that. Well, we had it. We had a a deal that was going with another guy to buy a bunch of jerseys from this factory in China that would have turned into some good sized money. But I mean, yeah, Corey's statement was something else. He, he made up something else. Corey yeah. makes up a lot of statements, though. Yeah. Yeah. We, we we make make up I mean, I've read stuff on his Facebook going, man, I can't believe you can put this stuff out there. Like, you, you show know, pictures of, the, what, of what we would be working on and acting like we were partners in the business. Did you know he was he was checking on his detective, find out where his children went to school and where he lived and all that kind of stuff? Now, I'll be honest there. He, I didn't know that part. Mm -hmm. But he made a comment one night, I think, about when he all went to his mom's house, maybe. Mm -hmm. It was pretty irate. And I said, man, you can't talk like that, Corey. And they, you know, they just doing what they got to do. But uh, as far as any other stuff about all that, yeah. no, sir, I had no idea. That's wrong. Absolutely wrong. I mean, I had a man threaten my child one time and threaten Veronica over some windows we installed in his house. And no, sir. It's like I told you that night that it happened. If you and Corey were sitting around drinking beers and you said something like, I wish my wife was dead, it'd be a whole lot easier. And if he took that to mean something else, you know, we were trying to talk to you, give you an opportunity to explain how he just shows up, you know? Right. And did that conversation ever happen? Was there any moment that you said something off the wall, like you just said out of character, and that he might have taken wrong? I don't know. Can I speak to you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you want to talk first? Yeah, y'all go ahead. Well, I don't think I'm Well, I mean, y'all go ahead out there. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I knew the answer already, but I wanted to verify. I mean, like I said a moment ago, I've, always, I've made offhand comments a number of times. I never wish that anybody shot her or killed her, but I had told people once upon a time that I wish she'd get run over by a drunk driver. You know, or that something would happen to her just because, you know, but those were in moments of anger. Then things would relax and calm down. When Veronica was working, things were peachy keen, and Veronica had been working an awful lot now. So things were peachy. That's why I thought we were going to be at an end finally. Why'd she tell her lawyer she was scared of you, maybe stretched her recently? To me, I have no idea why she'd have told Mr. any of that. Because the fact of the matter is, I never went anywhere near except for when we were exchanging, and that was always cordial. I mean, even in the times that when would come here and she would bring him, it was still very calm. So I don't know why she would have said she was scared of me if she did. Well, I mean, did y'all exchange at the same place? Time? None of these guys know. I mean, was it a routine or was it a different place? A couple of times we changed. We met in Rivergate at the mall a couple of times because it was closer to me being in Greenbrier in Ridgetop. Uh, we met at the McDonald's in uh, Lakewood a couple of times. But primarily, especially here at the end, since she started going to church regularly, it was just as easy to meet right there after church. Now, now we met Corey. in the same parking lot at the same time. Every now time. Corey knows. I don't know, maybe just talking when I'm saying, hey, I'm going to the church to meet Veronica, you know? I mean, but like I said, we talked often about trying to get the boys together to do stuff. We just never did. So Corey would take it on his own to be sitting out there by chance. And she would show up and then follow her home. To be honest, sir, I have kill no her idea. just to get her iPhone. I have no idea, to be honest. Right. Well, we've, we've narrowed down the time of the murder to like 12 minutes. Right. I think you told me that before. Nine phone calls back and forth between you and him. It starts at him hitting off a tower near his girlfriend's house, and then he's the last few calls hit at the same tower over near St. Edward's. Right. And nine times back and forth before Benjamin's dropped off with you. And then he's following her. And then he has a 12 minute window to kill her. And then he calls you immediately after 1220 and 1222. Okay. That. You know, I understand, you understand how, it looks, how it looks. Well, yes, sir, I do absolutely. You know, Everything you said, I understand how it looks. And, and you understand that you're the you're his best friend. You're according to him, your business partners. According to you, he works for you. 
Right. You know, well, we were partners in the other thing. I openly said that. Yes, sir. Or right. you, you talked about leaving the country with him. I'm, I'm sorry? About leaving the country with him. With all his financial, where were you going to get the money to go to Barbados? I wasn't Poland? talking about immediately, sir, by any means. I mean, I just got back. And the only reason I got to go then was because that I had some money come in off of the job that we were just beginning, and I took part of my profit and I spent it to go. But you, you understand. I understand completely connection. what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I understand exactly what you presented me with. And, and you understand what Corey's going to say, right? When we go pick up. I have no idea what Corey will say, to be honest with you. And Corey, do you see Corey taking this upon himself? I don't know. No. More than well, I mean, the way you're talking about him, probably not. But I mean, that doesn't right. mean that I can't say something any more than. Well, I'll tell you, like I say, I've been doing this a long time. I think I sat in this very room with a guy named William Stevens who hired a kid to kill his wife and his mother-in-law. Had the same conversation. He did the same thing. The shooter testified against him. He's on death row right now. Getting close to being executed. I mean, that's, that's, right. that's the realism of it all. You know? Uh, and that's... We just want to know... You, what ball game you're in, and it's a very serious one. So we don't fool around with the death penalty. It's very serious to me. Right. I'm a Christian person. I don't enjoy seeing people get the death penalty. Uh, but it's the law. In certain situations, it's required. So that's why I always give people a chance to tell us, to talk, maybe show remorse, whatever try to help themselves. That's kind of where you are. I mean, I know right. it's early on, but, you know, I'm not telling you anything that we can't prove. Uh, I'm extremely sad that she's gone. Right. I mean, I lay here and cry now, and my son cries to me, uh, even when I get to call him, which I try my best not to do because it's hard on him. I mean, I'm sorry she's gone. Absolutely. Sixteen years we were good. I love the woman to death. We both moved on. But, you know, I, I see no other deal with Corey being the killer other than you're involved. I mean, there's no logical reason, plus all the cell phone activity, right. plus him knowing where you're picking her up, plus life insurance. I mean, it, it, it's it's pretty devastating evidence. You haven't really told me anything other than I didn't do it. Uh, I mean, to help us out. I mean... Corey gains like, nothing. Corey, there's, Corey has no gain at all to murder Veronica. He has no gain, no financial gain, no gain with property, no gain, no gain whatsoever to murder Veronica. But who stands to gain the most? The person closest to him is best friend. The only thing he can gain is to you. And I have nothing to give. That's the part that I don't understand. $550,000. Well, plus and a house, another and a house, and a car, well, and other properties. And like yeah, you man. said, there's more to the hill. I mean, I don't know, but the Hermitage House, you know, five no way, like I did, see how much it's worth. Right, right. He lives at home with his mom. I'd be more to the hill with my mom. I, mean, I mean, I'd love to live at home, but, but that's just me. And I, well, made see, all I, but my I, mom tells me why I'm there. I can talk, talk to you guys about my, what I've, I've come up with, but you know, I, I don't know. I'm not in the at all. All I can do is don't tell the truth. And after that, I'm... What about, I mean, from the start, I mean, what, like even when you told me, very first time I met you, Veronica. That's a great mom, a terrible wife. Is no, that what you're talking about? Your exact words. Exactly right. No, exact words. I think you said she had a great mom, right? Well, yeah. Right. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, just. There's a lot of wives who can fall in that category, but their husbands don't inspire and kill. Well, I mean, are you an idiot? I mean, might be. Yeah. What? I mean, that, and that's what I do. Y'all want? I don't know. We can get no. I mean, I'm just. You know, I'm just. The, the no, thing with we've been bashing our head in for forever. I mean, well, here's the we thing. know how it looks. Bad things but, happen to good people. Good people are put in situations that they would otherwise normally not put themselves in. Okay, we all do it sometimes. Sometimes it's worse than others. This is a bad case and a bad extreme. But the fact is, if we can see the pressure, we can see the pressure coming from the lawyers, the family, the money, the whole thing. And if you're put in a bad situation and you were given an out, 
and, and you took that out, you know, I think now is the time where you need to decide what best helps your family. Because, you know, as Tom Thurman is sitting here telling you, this is a serious case. I understand okay. that, absolutely. And we laid out uh, not everything, obviously some things we can't share at this time, but we laid out a good portion of the information that we have. And we've been very open and honest with you about it, okay? And, you know, we were hoping you, you could talk to your attorney and then come o open up with him. It's not something you don't want to tell anybody. I'm, I'm sure I wouldn't probably tell my attorney the truth right off the bat. That's something I probably wouldn't do. I'd, I'd be, my pride would hold me back, but eventually I'd have to realize to be represented properly, I need to be truthful with my attorney. You can lie to mama and you can lie to your wife, but you don't lie to your attorney, okay? And if you're forced in a bad situation, at some point you're gonna have to let the pride go. You're gonna have to let everything go and think about what's best for your son and then talk to your attorney and then ultimately, however that plays out, then talk to us if that includes what your attorney says you probably should do. He sat here the whole time and told you to be truthful. And that's the best thing to do is to be truthful with this. You know, we are presenting this opportunity to you because I'll be honest with you. I know General Thurman, when we get Corey back tomorrow and he starts running his mouth and talking because he's sweating it, then at that point, I don't think Tom would even care to hear what you have to say because he'd be so frustrated with what happened today and with, with the I don't knows, I don't knows. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just that's my opinion, okay? Because at some point, you know Corey's going to talk because Corey's not going to go to jail. Corey's not going to take it. Corey's going to be faced with everything the same way you're faced with it, and he's going to know his goose is cooked. And Corey's going to know, all right, at this point, I gained nothing by staying in jail. Ow, that hurt. He's going to stay in jail. It's just a question when we put a deal on his arm. Right. And then at that point... And he's been in jail before. He knows how to play the game. He knows... Yeah, I've never been in trouble except for that one Did I give you that opinion? I couldn't remember. Did I give you that opinion? Remember when I gave you a Corey's record? No, you didn't give me an opinion, but you gave me the Did record. Did I read you a Blackburn's language, I think, or something? Mm -hmm. oh, well, I guess I did. Because at some point, you know so Corey's going to cooperate and Corey's going to come clean. And at that point, General Thurman's not going to need to talk to you. And then he'll proceed with the case the best way the state sees fit. And I, I know it's a hard thing to sit and admit that something happened. I know it, it's, we don't think you're a bad person. We think a bad choice was made. We think you're probably forced into that choice. Knowing how you feel for I know that you love your son above all else. Absolutely. I've got a nine-year-old son that I love above all else, okay? Sometimes, like I told you that night, I could see where a man could be pushed against the wall. And if that's the opportunity, that presented itself and you took your way out, then that's what I think you'd, you'd be best to say, this is what happened. I need to come clean. You know, you got all this weight and pressure on you. I can see it in your eyes. I can see it building. I, I know you, you've got your family to think of, Benjamin to think of, you know, your, your mom, everything. I can see the weight on you. I, I deal with people in bad situations all the time. I deal with good people in bad situations, okay? And we know you don't have a record. You, you, we know you've been in trouble for nothing major. I mean, maybe a driver's license or DUI or something, whatever. But nothing like this, okay? And if you're put in a position and it goes bad and you're put in a position where you only think you have one way out and you act upon it, then, you know, at some point you're going to have to face the consequences and at some point you're going to have to do what's best for your family and what's best for you. And I don't think Losing both his parents is what's best for him. You know, at some point, the best thing to do and the only thing to do is face up to what has happened and, and try to explain what has happened and move on with your life however it is, okay? I know it's hard to admit what's happened. I know it's hard to come forward and say, all right, I'm sorry I've, I've said this. Uh, I'm sorry that I haven't been totally truthful with you. But this is what truly happened, and I want to get it off your chest, my chest. Because I can see it sitting there building on you, okay? And we do this for a living. We investigate things, <clears throat> and we gather all the facts, you know? And we don't think you're a bad person, all right? Because we see it all the time, how bad things happen to good people. And sometimes people are put in bad positions. And that's what we are here right now, trying to give you an opportunity. To, to help yourself as far as your family and, and what have you. And we're just wanting the truth. You know, we're trying to just get the truth 
and then whatever the truth is, however it lays out, it is. You know what I mean? And you know, your your attorney sat here and told you to be truthful. You know, we, we just want the truth. Like I said, people are put in positions, and people react uh, when they think they're pressured, and when we think that's probably what happened in this situation. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the bottom line is. Me evaluating this case is you're probably never going to prison again. For the rest of your life, you're going to be in prison. It's just a question of where. Are you on death row? Are you life without parole and maximum? Are you serving a life sentence where you can have privileges, where you can see your son more often? That kind of situation. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, if you, you go ahead and, and, and give us this guy that you're going to walk away because you're not. I mean, I, I'd be lying to you. Like, the lawyer knows better than that. I mean, you know, this is just an opportunity. Yeah, no problem. I don't, you know, all that and, you know, that's... But, uh, you know, it's a big difference. And, you know, you got your mother still alive. You know, I lost both my parents before I was 17. So that means something to have them and what you're going to put them through if we go through a death penalty trial. It's, so I often say when I'm out there talking to the media, there aren't any winners in a death penalty case. It's victims on both sides as you watch those family members go through it. And if you watch your nine-year-old son have to deal with it at school when it's on TV, you have to go through that. I mean, I mean that's reality. I'm talking reality to you now because you're, you're in a very real bad situation, a really bad situation. And I don't see any way out of it. I mean, I'd go to trial tomorrow in this case. I really would. And, and you know, you, Mike used to work in our office. He's a good lawyer. But you know, lawyers only as good as the evidence. Right. You know, and I mean, it is stacked on top of you right now. It seems to me. And you cooperating against this guy, who's a true sociopath killer who abuses women, is the only way for you to get any consideration. Otherwise, you may be sitting right there with him. And you know, it, it's. <laughs> It's not a good situation. I've, I've sat across a lot of people and a lot of decisions made some good, a lot bad. But you know, uh, you just, uh, Corey, thanks for bluffing. We don't bluff. Not in cases like say this. You don't. We don't. No. I, I can bluff all I want, but he can't. He can. You know. I mean, it's just, it's a real situation. I mean, I, I have sympathy for you. You do have a child. It was unfortunate he was with you when you was arrested. That's just the way. Well, I they did. They were nice and they were good to him. I, I told him I'll thank you that. I understand, but still, it was bad. You see your father have to go through that, uh, and that's something else you got to look at. Your obligation to your family and who's left there about what this is going to do to them. And I mean, I've been through a lot of them, and you know, and you're just in a very bad situation for everybody involved. And that's what you've got to think about. Yeah, just but I, I'm not quite as dramatic, but you know, a lot of standard one was a lot of your mom won every lot of me, you know. Yeah. So I mean that's what it, yeah. otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here. This would be a very dumb move. But you know, like you said, I mean I don't know what you can tell them other than what you've told me, but I haven't gone through you know, obviously I was looking at you know, there's a lot to talk about it. You know, I'm not bragging to you, but I haven't lost a case since 1990. And that guy was not guilty. He was actually innocent. We found out later. And that's a lot of cases. Not that I'm great, but I'm good at evaluating evidence. I'm good at knowing a case when I see it. In other words, I don't go to trial if I think a person's innocent or there's reasonable doubt there, normally. Uh, so your odds aren't very good. I've tried a lot of cases worse than this, I guarantee you that. You know, the last one I lost was innocent too. Mm -hmm. Just for the record, the last one I lost, they were innocent too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the murder of Texas. Yeah. We got some. And we talked about that in depth. I mean, he understood. And that's one thing. I mean, I had, like John Mayan called the attorney, how do you know it? And your friends. And I mean, that's what is so weird about this whole situation. To explain, I mean, they don't know you guys and what she does and what you do and all that stuff that's the part you know of course i've been around you a lot longer and you know so i mean this is this is something i do for myself because of what i do right. when i have to stand up for a jury 
and I asked them to kill another individual. That's very serious to me. And I always, in my own mind, want to know, I gave that person an opportunity. They chose not to take it. Right. It's much easier for me psychologically to do that. Because these trials, like I say, there aren't any winners. Everybody, well, I can understand it's this. very intense and it's very tough on everybody involved. So this is hard for me Right. To sit down. And, and I've done it with a lot of people to give them a chance. I mean, when we make a decision on a death penalty, remorse, things like that are something we consider. I mean, right. you sit down. I mean, the murder for hire is, is one of those aggravators which juries take very seriously. Right. Uh, you know, so I, basically I wanted to give you an opportunity to see what you had to say because maybe there was something earth shaking and I knew you hadn't had that opportunity and kind of an opportunity for me to to talk to you and your lawyer and let you know where I thought your situation was. Can I ask just a little bit, I mean, because when this right, everywhere I laid on him leads to a woman who That was from his thing, and I saw. So I didn't know. Yeah, there, but he did have an account, and oh, well, another thing is just tra tracing all the different envelopes from where he was. You know, we we, stuff. Fully, I mean, we just, fully investigate all avenues. You know, <laughs> one of them, and then there was two others that we investigated. And, you know, and then at one point in the investigation, when yeah, I mean, yeah, get I on he somebody, proposed to her in, you know, when he was married, is that correct? I mean, I, well, your client did the same thing. Well, no, 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 no. I mean, when, when we're not kind of investigating I, I don't, morals, but I mean, well, no, no, no. Well, I, mean, mean, well, I hadn't actually proposed yet. My statement was one day maybe we can get married, but we can live together as long as you want to. That's what mine was to my girl, but you know. But he was you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. When, when you're faced with the evidence I, against Gotham, it's, and it's the, it's not tied to Gotham at all. Well, and Brian would have had to call the police, get rid of the gun, get rid of the I understand. I mean, I understand. All and her all phone has to, is leaving with Corey and tracing all the yeah, yeah, I mean, I can give hours. you all the different motives I've thought of over there. Yeah. But, I mean, but, but that's neither here nor there. It's a done deal with the murder weapon, basically. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, I mean, even if Cotton and, did and it. Cell phone. Can, but, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's why we're sitting here. I mean, I mean obviously. Well, can, can we have time to talk again? Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, actually, we can get you a private room where you two can talk and then, you yeah, know. Why don't you smoke me in these rooms either? No, but yeah. we'll let you go outside. Well, the murder guys. The murder guys. Well, we'll, we'll, here last time. we'll let you no, go I'm outside. Kidding. No, I mean, I'm not kidding. I'll go ahead and smoke Sarah. We'll step out. We'll turn the tank. No, 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 no. It's cool. It's cool. What you got? Where's that water down there, though? It's outside. Do you mind? I know you don't want to do I think y'all right now. I don't know if he smokes or not. I know. No, he doesn't. I mean, you go right outside there. I'm very confident. That's the one. I don't know. Because he's like, I don't know. So, I mean, he's kind of like, I've done it even a lot harder than that. Give me Corey. I thought they were great criminals because the arson is well. <laughs> well, you know, Corey, not a criminal. If the record is just clear, he's a hell of a con man. You look at his face. He's got new women everywhere. Oh, yeah. He's got them on there. Is that his problem? He's got three different women he's living with, taking money from them. I mean, I, he's, this is a, he's a man. sociopath. So it's good. It's just from the even more. I mean, I don't believe it. Well, he's I don't sad. know. Because I mean, he's don't. dating Veronica's sister, from what I heard. So he was up in New York and everything was messing around with Veronica's yeah. sister. Well, that doesn't matter. Does well, it? he doesn't have a motive to kill her. He sure ain't not talking this. I don't know. He's not tied to this I, guy. He's I don't know. I mean, that's I know, but I mean, he's I'm just calling Robinson. <laughs> he's not taking her cell phone a lot I, 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 or his cell phone. No, I, I mean, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I've gone it's not through it everywhere. I mean, I wasn't kidding when I'm calling those guys. I mean, it's too weird. But uh, she was on her cell phone, yeah. and then he finds the body. All the what about the, what the, did y'all see that for him? Or did, was that, I thought the guy didn't was for him. Because that, that's what the most weird thing I saw. I was there fucking flooring under the, the couch that was up against the wall. I could photo them. Yeah, I'm just there for a second. Okay. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I saw the no heroes in that group. <clears throat>
My favorite was I didn't take the walk because I didn't want to be charged with robbery and then they can't get off the bus. Yeah. We're not having bus fare. Uh, well, I mean, just, you know, we were out there talking to you about, and, you know, there's, you know, obviously the things, and there's, you know, some things, and, you know, everything's on the table as far as I'm concerned. And that's exactly what, I mean, I don't know how it could have been any client has, whatever I told, I was telling the officer the same thing. You know, I ain't got time. You, know, you tell me the truth. And shot, and that's the truth. As soon as you know, I'm relaying something that's wrong. My credibility's gone. I mean, we had some issues in the job about uh, when I called you. I mean, the mm -hmm. phone went dead, and then you called him on the exact same telephone. No, I called him before I talked to you. Well, no, I don't know. I, I, I got I, I, before I do any say anything. I. I get the exact time from myself. Yeah. From the number. Yeah, when I, before I called, I talked to Tim before I talked to you at all. No. Yeah. I was talking to you. Well, I, I would smack him. Well, we're not getting into this. Okay, no, I was just saying, I, I talked, I called Tim. I, I would, I didn't know him. Yeah. Go ahead. Can I go? Absolutely. All right. I can. Through this whole thing, I've had a hard time believing that Corey could have possibly done this from the very beginning. Corey's always been a big part of our family's life. What you're showing me is, without a doubt, Corey did. Corey actually, at one point in one time in a conversation, said it was done. I didn't ask questions. I didn't understand. I didn't know. I didn't want to know. And I still had it, even a hard time believing that he could possibly do anything like that. Why would he tell you it was done? What, how would you know what he was talking about? Because it was after she'd been murdered. The only thing I can think of is that he acted somehow on something that I had said, and I openly admitted I'd said it to him. I've said it to a number of people, things about I just wish nothing anytime recently. And it may have been in that day in court when I was standing there and we just saw Carol Solomon. In fact, maybe that I maybe said, I don't know. I don't know why Corey would have done this. There was no kind of arrangement. I know, and, and now everything I say seems backwards, and that's what I was talking to him about. Everything I say now was taken with a grain of salt, and you can believe it or not believe it, of course. I didn't know what to do with that bit of information. I didn't know. But that's it. I, I don't deny, I, I, can't, I can't tell myself that my friend didn't do this anymore. It's there. I can't believe that he was at my house, at my mom's, with my son, hugging my son when my son cried. No, he was the one who did it. Corey didn't do anything without an angle. He just involves money. You know? I, I had no money. I had none. I, I mean, I don't. The money I had was going to take care of what I was doing for and to try and pay what little bit of bills I had and spend some time with my girlfriend. So you think you and Corey were so tight that he hears you make a statement, you wish your wife was gone or dead or out of the way, he would just go out and do it on his own. Just because of your friendship? I knew we were close and tight. I would have never thought that. But I'm sitting here being very honest. There, there is no agreement of any kind. I mean, the only money I owe Corey now is for like 25 hours worth of work over two weeks where he came out while I was waiting for a final draw, which I haven't even finished the job on because of this. The, uh, uh, the remodel, you mentioned that stuff. As far as Veronica's relationship with Corey, I mean, did you say you lived with him? When was that? Uh, it her, it was, was, it was. Were y'all living in the same house? No, it was probably six years ago, six and a half years ago, maybe. It's when we were on Stratford Avenue, off of Stratford Avenue, over there on Hayden Drive. And it's when he was first born. I think he may have been one, maybe going on two, maybe. Yeah, and there's a lot of people in there, obviously. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. That's what I'm, you know, just the same stuff you told me. I mean, right. as I mean, He's always been intertwined in our family. Always. When he, he told you it's done, was that on the phone or in person? No, it was on the phone, sir. On the phone? Was, was that the phone. same day she was killed? 
I don't remember which date it was, sir, to be honest. So what did you say? I said I don't have time to talk. I can't talk. I just hung up. Because at that point, I'm... I'm Were you I'm all not, talking about her murder at that time when he said it's done? What everybody was talking about, the murder at that time, from everything, from the moment it happened, everybody I knew was talking about it. So... Well, let me ask you this. Yes, sir. I know you said that you made statements, you know. Absolutely. You, you never come out and told us you made the statement in jest, even as in general conversation with friends, that you, that you wish she was dead. I never wished anybody could kill her, no. Like I said before, I even said I wish some drunk driver might catch her or something. I never wished anybody to kill my wife. So Corey, when he wouldn't get from you, I wish she was, somebody would kill her if you've never said it, but for him to say it's done, you're saying that he may have taken something you've taken out of context. You guys have talked about a whole new Corey today that I didn't know, that my wife didn't know. If I had known this Corey, he'd have never been around my family in the first place. In fact, he'd have never been around anybody I know in this place. And why, when we had him in the back of the police car, you didn't come and say, this is what he said and that's what he did and that's the man? I'm sorry, I didn't know who you had in the back of the police car. I didn't know you had anybody in the back of the police car. You told, you told me. No, you didn't say you had anyone in the back of the police car. You told me that you had some stuff you wanted to show me, that I meet you at the gas station. Well, you did tell him that. I didn't tell him. I mean, I just got because I just told So I did not know. You to come see the guy that we're saying. I had never told him. I didn't know about a guy. I'm sorry. I don't remember you ever saying a guy to me, did you? No, no. There you go. Thank you. Actually, I just finished talking. You were coming to my office. Or going home. And yeah, you I was called me. I called him. Letter. He called he was you. You called me. He was coming from the vet. I was talking to you. Okay. So exactly. Right. I had just picked the puppy up and was trying to get it groomed right. and going to the vet and stuff like that. Exactly right. I had the dog with me. So shortly after your wife's murder, he says it's done. And what was the statement before that? What were you talking? About? To be honest, I don't remember. I just remember those words. It's done. That could that have been. It may have very well been exactly very day that. she was murdered. That phone call you got right after she was killed. It may have been, but I don't remember it. To be honest with you, I'm sorry. There's been so many things in my head, so many phone calls and people. Well, for him to call you up right after he kills your wife, say it's done, would indicate that he thought that right that, uh, you were expecting it to be done, and he played the job. I mean, somebody just doesn't call you up and say it's done, with no other. I don't. I don't remember exactly when it was, sir. But I do remember having the conversation. I remember four, it was after you talked to me? Or, I mean, I don't, it was a day after two? After I don't remember, to be honest. Did he ever show you the iPhone? His iPhone? Did he have an iPhone? Corey's got, a, he's got a droid phone, like I have. Um, from Verizon, I think, so his is from, whatever. Did he ever talk to you about an iPhone? No, sir. Because he went on a computer about an iPhone, about how to how to do things with an iPhone. He talked to a friend about an iPhone, about how to remove the battery. But in all your conversations, he never asked you about that. No, sir. I don't know anything about the iPhones anyway, except for the, the Bronca had one. I know they're very similar to the Joy that I have now, which I think is the similar one you've got. But I just recently got mine. Before that, I was a BlackBerry user, which was Bronca's old phone, in fact, that she gave me. And I don't know how many MacBooks there were, but I think I gave them to, that, to Tom. They were like, we found one receipts for free. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many were actually computers that she owned or whatever right. in the box. So I know she had bought, but we found the box for a little one with the thing. But we found how many receipts? Three or so. Did you, you knew she, yeah, there were a number of receipts where she just bought some stuff, I guess. I think I gave them. Well, Gaddy, the same young lady that was there with her the night before said that she was with him when she bought the books for work. So, so you don't remember if uh, 12.20, 12.22, that's when he said it, it's done? To be honest, sir, I don't remember any times. I couldn't tell you what time you actually got there and talked to me. Mm -hmm. Any other indication that he killed your wife? No, sir. Did you say, what in the hell are you talking about? What's the... No, sir, I uh, hung the phone up. As far as I remember, it's kind of like I said a second ago, I just kind of said, I don't have time to talk, and I kind of hung up on and went. So. But then you went, you know, you worked with them, you talked to them, you met at Home Depot. I. I what y'all did at Home Depot for two and a half hours? Two and a half hours? 
one to two and a half hours. I'd have to take the notes. Could be shopping. It's not hard for me to go in there knowing everybody because it's a place I shop all the time. And but he goes down from Kentucky to meet you at Home Depot and he all over there. For well, I was probably shopping. I mean, I, I was working a job I was trying to finish and we had done another little repair job. And when he said it's done, you took that, you said everybody was talking about Brian. Right. I, I didn't take it anyway at that point because I, I just was, like I said, this is not the Corey I've known. And I've known Corey a long time. Right, but you, you took it in context that he's talking about your wife. That's why he said, I ain't got time to talk to this right now. And I, gotta, I gotta go, right? No, sir, I didn't take it in any context. So you didn't think he meant, when he said it's done, you didn't think it meant that he said he killed his wife? I didn't think or? anything. But after this, now brought the conversation back. Okay, I was just trying to understand. No, absolutely. I, I, and then I'll be the first one. Even I have found it hard at any point to believe that Corey had done this until when you gave me all of this. Even the other day in the office, looking at what you had up there, I still was telling myself it's not possible. But all of this, there's no denying this. I agree, absolutely. Any other statements that come to mind that he might have said? No, sir, not really. And I, I mean, I know where I'm sitting right now, and I know what all this looks like, and I know it's all going to come back to me. Did he ever show you the gun? No, sir. I, not, no. I mean, as close as you all were, he's out showing his other friend that he has his gun. I don't he's do guns up on his phone and stuff. I've like never that. even owned a gun. My father had a gun when we were a child. And what, what about the military ballistic vest? And that, a friend just got back from Afghanistan and was trying to raise some money. He just got married. And I asked, and I said, well, I know some people. I'll spread it around. You know, some guys that work for me, they're not always the best of people, you know what I mean? So I, I openly said, hey, a friend of mine's got something. Who was that to? I'm sorry? I mean, was that just to Corey or was that several? Oh, no, I said it to a few other guys, too, that worked with me. Corey knew a million and one people. Who ended up selling it? Nobody. Nobody? You still got it? I know, sir. I don't have it. I didn't ever. Okay. Your friend does? Oh, yeah. Okay. Can I say anything else? No, well, we're going to we'll get Corey tomorrow. Okay. All right. Thanks. I got a question. You got that, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I you know, have that. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I, I just, you know, I, and I, I'm, believe me, I mean, I, I hope, I mean, I may be dumb, but I'm not stupid. And I, I don't know, you know, it's one of those situations, you know, uh, you know you're not dealing with an idiot. You, he knows what's at stake. He, so, what. I mean, and I, I'm trying to, you know, get somehow somebody to, to sort of see sort of the things that you believe Brian and everything he said, right? Until I showed you the divorce paperwork and all that shit. I think I called from the house because that when I was raising those questions, is that and that what happened? Sure. Uh, so, you know, I honestly, um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way that he can somehow show it. I mean. As far as college record, that's why I think of, we talked about several things. And that we'll mind sure just keep doing whatever. And I, don't know, I think it's phone calls. So we talked to him several times a day. You know, what the fuck? I don't know. But you know, as far as being a suspect, you know, cool. Just, just divorce. Mm -hmm. Who are you talking about, man? You're. I, I'm, I'm lost. Are you? Well, I'm talking. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, man. You're like boom, boom, boom. I know, and I've always been like that. Yeah. Just, like, Who are you talking about? about? I am trying to ask you what you, he I, telling you what he told me. I'm. You're telling me what around. Tim told you, right? Okay. But what do you want him to do, if anything, or can he do Who to tell? show you? Yeah, to get. The whole truth. I mean, I don't know. I, you know, like I said, I've been beating my head up against walls. I mean, I think it comes There's down. There's two distinct groups. Veronica Sprint and everybody that split off. Wedding. Total stranger talking about how freaky it was. Everything's, you know, it's a, I think Roger Moore summed it up. It's the worst made for TV movie come along in a long time. Well, that may be true in a little bit. You know, 
Not well, I think you know what's going to happen. I right. Mean, we're going to get Corey. We're going right. to give him pretty much the same opportunity to express sure. his involvement. And when he's faced with everything, obviously he's going to see the writing on the wall. And I think at that point, yeah. once Corey spills it, then we're, we don't need to talk to Tim anymore. You know, because obviously. This is my question. You think he'd be more truthful with Tim than he would with you? Who, Corey? Right. I mean, what are you offering? Are you on? No, I, I'm just putting it out there. I'm asking you guys what. Like, I don't know. I've, I've been. I mean, what are you throwing out there? You want? I'm not throwing anything out there. It's you guys. Whatever you throw something out there, I don't care. I don't know. I'm out of ideas. Other than you know, saying you know, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can talk know. about theories all day long. We, we but, are where we are. I mean, we've got, yeah, exactly. we got a pretty solid theory that, right. that we're convinced is right. And he knows uh, that, and I don't understand yet, but... I mean, still, I, 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 even he has no explanation why this guy, who's his best friend, who he calls all the time, he does all this stuff. Right. And how he would that's know why, was, That's so, what I'm putting I mean, forth. I, I don't know where it comes from. He it, can take a polygraph, I don't know if you want to go through we've that. Been, we put that on the table, what? I was saying, we're talking yeah. about it. We're Anyone happy. want to take a polygraph? I don't know much about him except I've heard they're very inconclusive either way that they're not doing right. Well, how do you think, you, how do you, think you do on it? I would hope I would pass, absolutely. Passing's 100. You're not comfortable with it? I mean, obviously, if you, you heard they're inconclusive and stuff, you're not comfortable. I'm not comfortable, but I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't if it came down to it. Do it. You advise them to do it? Absolutely. What I'm just, I know you got questions. What, you know, I want to answer them for you. I mean, I, I, like I said earlier, I think first thing he has to do is be truthful to you. Absolutely. Because, yeah. you know, without you knowing the whole story, you can't properly represent them. And you're sort of left in the dark. And I think, I think today you came in and I think you were throwing a lot of curveballs and bombshells that you didn't expect. I'm going to want the court. Right. No, I mean, I, I yeah. saw the record. I'm not an idiot. Right. No, I'm not saying you are. I'm, I'm just, you know, so as far as your next step, I mean, I, I guess that's between more you and Tim than, than us. I mean, we've laid it out on the table. We're ready to receive the truth. And, you know, Tom has already expressed his interest and in what he can do. And, and that's, that's what's out there. I mean, obviously, in the morning, Corey's wave, we're picking them up, and then uh, we got a one and a half hour ride, and then, then we're going to be coming down to Tom's office, and he's going to be the Christian burial. <laughs> we're going to be talking to Tom again. You know, we're bringing Corey to Tom tomorrow. Absolutely. But we obviously wanted to have a chance. Corey, Corey went in there, and he cold blooded murdered her after fighting. And, you know, we wanted to give, we don't really want to talk to Corey, but if we have to, we will. And this is Tim's opportunity to sort of lay it all on the table. <clears throat> and so far, all he's given us is I know it's one statement that he made about right. it's done, which make, doesn't make a lot of sense to me personally. Is, is looking at evidence that he would call him up and he knows nothing about it, and he's done it for whatever God knows reason. He's gonna call him up and say it's done. That just doesn't make any sense. I mean, to me or I think a juror or anything else. I mean, that's uh, it's I, I could I mean I don't doubt he called him up and said it's done, and I think it was right right after he murdered one of those calls right there on that Sunday afternoon. I think he did call him up and say it's done. I don't think that that, that but I think he knew it was going to be done. And that's still my theory on this case. Right. And I understand that. And that would be my theory too, looking at it. And, and once we I talk to Corey, then you realize there's no reason to come back and talk to Tom. Well, yeah, in theory, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I don't know, you know, Corey could say the man on the moon did it, or he could say he did it. I don't know. I personally probably wouldn't believe him one way or the other at this point. Because, I mean, I've looked into it back then. But well, that's a I I've got to don't. If I tell my clients stuff, then they can regurgitate stuff, which I think is one Yeah. I, so, if you want to do anything, polygraph, or whatever. Can I ask another question? Sure. Can the three of us sit right here in this room and speak? You there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be recorded. That's fine. You seem to be a man I can respect. 
a man that stretch, shoots straight. I like to think that's my reputation. What is the best case scenario I can have here? Absolutely. I know what the worst case is. You, like I said, he can't make your promises or no, anything. No, 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 but I'm just saying, no. Consideration. Consideration, right. What would be my best case scenario? I know what the worst one is. The worst one's a death penalty. Absolutely. No ifs, ands, or buts. And, you know, I can't make your promises, but, you know, in this range, at least a life, or best would be 50 years, 100%, which means 40 something. In other words, not good. I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, yeah, we'll give you a sweet old deal because we can't. The basic thing we're doing is, and it's hard for you, who, who's not a con, right. who hadn't been in the prison system to understand the semantics of how you serve your time, what you get to do in prison. Right. And it doesn't matter. 40 years, I'm an old who, man in my son, and everybody I know is dead. Who your house with, that kind of situation. Right. Everybody you, I know is gone by that point, though. But, you so. know, in, in your situation, we can't. Just say, oh yeah, we'll give you five years, ten years, and we'd be crazy. You testifying against him when he, if in fact you were involved with the murder, you know, it just wouldn't work. I mean, the main thing with your cooperation, you could do. You know, we could go in when we make a death penalty decision, say he's cooperated, he's agreed to testify, he's remorseful, all that kind of stuff, and that's the kind of situation that takes that kind of stuff off the, right. off the table. That's the thing that allows you to to at least have some freedom in prison to do programs, to do stuff, to see your son, to see your family, that kind of stuff. Uh, that's the situation. I mean, it's not a good one. I mean, I can't paint a rosy picture for you. No, sir. I mean, I really can't. I mean, I this is a really bad situation, and the facts are really bad. You know, you know you're, it's, it's not a pretty situation. No matter how you felt about your wife, she looked like a very you know, a beautiful mother was. of a nine-year-old child that was brutally murdered at her own home. Nobody, uh, I mean, it's it's a strong death penalty case, and, I, and I'm not threatening you. I'm just... Well, no, you're speaking the truth. I'm yes, just sir. trying to let you know what your situation is, and I'm not saying you'll get the death penalty. I'm not even saying we've decided to go for the death penalty yet. Uh, that's a decision we make somewhere down the, down the line. But, uh, uh, we talked. We talked about that. Yeah. So, and he, you know, he obviously understands yeah. it. You know, and even life is fifty-two calendar years or fifty-four however many. But, but I'm just thinking right. that, that Corey, once he sees a handwriting on the wall, he's going to start figuring out how can I best save. Right. Which is all he's all about. Period. It's his own. Um, but I mean, it's. I, I don't think I've seen too many more disgusting people than him with what you see on his phone. And That's what's how unbelievable, he's, though. I mean, he's treated just, women and. And lied to him and got them all messed up. I mean, he's just a. But he's the best guy when he likes you. To right. my family, he's, he's been so good to him ever, forever. My friends that are around him, they love him to death. He does it where he can use people. Okay, can, can we talk one more time now? Absolutely. That's the time. Can we get a look at this here? Yeah. I'll The time appears to be 14, 1645, I'm sorry, 1635 hours. We're going to stop the DVD and put a new one in uh, at this time. They're out in the hall uh, talking. Bo's and his attorney. Sure. The detective role. Yes, sir. I think like you met him. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so he's. To sit in because I can't talk to you by myself without making right. myself. That's, I, I, know, I didn't help him that, that, but he can't make himself a witness. So I we need to get some help here. Alright, so I did take that. I'll be there probably the time. Well, I assume it was kind of like that, I think, right. that we've been dealing with. So he says you want to talk a little bit further. And, you know, it's, it's your day, really, to, right. to talk. I mean, I you know it's not. And what, what I said was just talk to me, like, talk to him. I'll, talk, I'll tell him exactly what I just show. told you, what we just talked about. 
situation I'm in, of course, I'm scared to death. First time I've ever been in any kind of trouble. Yeah, I don't blame you. It's it's not a situation anybody needs to be in. Like I said, you know, we kind of understood some of the pressures on you that might have made you get in that situation. But, but you know, it's it's a bad situation. There's no way to sugarcoat it. There's no as far as going for this higher thing, that's still yeah. absolutely not true. I made comments to people. Corey and I had some other talks. And they were still kind of in this jest thing. He was having trouble with the girl who's staying at the house on Severe you asked about. She's going through a divorce now, and the guy's actually trying to get custody of Corey's son because he turned it over to all these other problems that are allowing him to be in a position to do this kind of thing. He was complaining all the time about it. There was a movie years ago that Billy Crystal and, and uh, Danny DeVito did. It was called Throw Mama from the Train. They both had terrible wives and mothers or whatever, and they said, we'll do this crisscross thing. And just in jest, I said, okay, you know, hey, I, you know, we should do the same thing. And this was months ago. Corey, just the week before we did this, came to my house, asked me for $35,000. Whenever I got life insurance money, I said, Corey, I'm not even getting the insurance money. You know, they're not going to give me anything while I'm in kind of trouble like this stuff. His call was the night of the thing. I still couldn't believe that he did it because that, I'd say we were just kind of messing no matter what. I was messing. But he told me that he did it. He asked me for money, which I told him I don't have. You know, the thirty-five thousand did he ask you for that out before the murder? Just last week, oh, before last we week. got picked up. Oh, last week after the murder. He came to my house and spoke to me and my mom and my son, hugged everybody, he asked my mom how she was feeling, how she was holding up. When I walked him outside to the car, we were talking, and he brought it up then. So he wanted thirty-five thousand. What made him think he would have thirty-five thousand to get? He knew about the. Well, he that's what he talked about. He said, "Whenever you get insurance money," and I even told him, "I don't know that I've got any. I mean, I'm not getting anything." So I mean, and and then I don't know. I still I didn't know what to do, I'm, and I'm sorry. I've lied to everybody here. I admit it. I lied to Michael even because I just didn't know what to do. And now it's in a worse place because of a lie. But that's it. I mean, we talked about it in that context of this crisscross kind of thing. Who were you going to kill? He killed your wife? It was some guy named, what was his name? Ex-husband. Or going through a divorce now. I don't even know his last name. But I'm sure you know because she's at the house. But, uh... But I mean, I even told him that I wasn't going to do that afterwards. I mean, I just couldn't. I can't do that kind of thing. He told you before this. he killed your wife. Oh yeah, I mean, shortly afterwards, he brought it up again, and I and I told. Oh, him. after you killed your wife, and you said you weren't going to do. No, 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 no. Before he okay. killed my wife, and he brought it up again, <clears throat> and I even said that I can't do nothing like that. So I mean, it's that. That's it. Just, I mean, I've made comments about you know. And not just him, but to people in general, that life was easy when Bronk was working. My son and I, we were together probably 80, 85% of the time, just he and I for eight years now. And every time we were ready to get divorced, there was something else she wanted and something else she wanted. I don't know, I thought we were finally going to be done, and now he does this. How many days before the homicide took place? Or weeks was it that y'all talked about this crisscross? Oh, this may have been in the very beginning kind of thing when I first ran into him. Which well, wait, again, nobody knows. Oh, I'm sorry. You Corey, gotta get, get Corey and I ran into each other the day I went to court with Veronica about custody. And, and Joe Solomon's court. Whenever day. Which was what? Was it May? Well, you don't have any of the documents from John Michael. I've got it. It may have been May, I think. We're talking two or three months. Oh, it's court. been a while, yes, sir. But you go to court over, I didn't. I mean, the parenting plan okay. to get it put into place so we knew where we were standing. I don't know what date that was. 
I mean, Corey came up behind me when I was talking to my attorney there and tapped me on the shoulder. And he called my mom that morning looking for me because he was back in town. Looking for you for what? Just to reconnect. He'd been gone for seven or eight years to the other coast. Is what he told me out to Oregon and California and stuff where he was an iron worker. He's so he comes and he sees you in court. He's seeking you out. We start talking. I say, hey, man, yeah, come on. You can come work and hang out with me. And we started working. He started hanging out every day with me at work. And how does the conversation come about about the first place? Veronica and I probably had some argument or something, and I just kind of made this crazy comment about, you know, that she I'm was going to be specific. Is your cat? I, I don't know how to be. I mean, well, did y'all it may have been. Movie or it may have been. No, no, no. I saw the movie 15, 20 years ago whenever it came out. It's the only time I've ever seen it, but it just kind of stuck that funny kind of thing that they were doing. It never worked out for them either, but I don't like the way that sounded. Um, but uh, I don't He was always complaining about this guy. And I don't know, maybe if Ryan and I had, had some kind of words or something that didn't work that day for us, or I, I don't know what had happened, maybe. And it just popped up. But. Uh, but you said you made other statements to other people about well, like I said earlier, killing Veronica. Well, Veronica well never about that. killing Veronica or having well, anyone ever kill Veronica. Veronica. Yes. So you, you said you wanted to shoot her or no. drown her. You never no, made those no, sir. No, Why sir. Why people make that up? I don't know. I still don't know who would have told you they saw me there the night before. Um, well, the neighbors that know you. Well, that's okay. I mean, yeah, I, I've met only a few of the neighbors and only one truly knows me. And that's Did the you go out there and ask them about surveillance cameras? I talked to the neighbor out back when he was there one time, and I said, did you see anything? They said they had some cameras out here. Did you see anything? I said, I'm hoping. I, and I did. I even asked the other neighbors what they heard who were on the back porch, which were some that I was supposedly trying to work on their house for the VA, the black couple. Um, but, uh, so you had this conversation about crisscross murder. Fairly in depth, I assume, since you knew who you were supposed to murder to. Well, I mean, he just, I mean, was there any not really in depth type who thing, like first? how we're going to do it, when we're going to do it, or none of that stuff, no, sir. It was just kind of one of those things, and then I don't remember being brought up again any time until he got mad again. And then the day she's, she's murdered, he calls you up and says it's done. Yes, sir, he did. And you all continue to talk after that, though. Yes, sir. What did you talk about then? work and everything else. Um, He's concerned about the, as far as the murder. That's what I mean, you're, you're not telling me that this guy calls you up and says, I just killed your wife. Well, he, uh, it's, it's done. He, and you thought, well, wait a minute, we're only joking. And then you just proceed to talk about, well, let's meet at nine tomorrow and put in some drywall or something. Well, no, sir. That, that didn't work, no, sir. It didn't work that way. Weren't you in shock? Yes, sir. I, I wasn't. Mother, in fact, I didn't really see you for child. three or four days, probably. And I wasn't stunned. And I was shocked. Why didn't you tell the police? Because that night, Crumby and those guys scared me to death when they told me that no matter what. I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know who, but they actually said no matter what happened, no matter who it was, it was coming to you no matter what. Well, when he called you up and said it's done, you knew who did it, right? I didn't really, I didn't believe, to be honest, I did not believe, and it may be all, I did not believe so it at the time. A coincidence that your wife's murdered and this guy who... You had some kind of agreement to murder, called you up and says it's done the same no, exact sir, day. That day murdered. it happened, I was literally stunned. I, I, I mean, I was, all I could think about was how am I going to tell my son that his mother died, which I did the next morning with my entire family there. That's all I could think about was what I was going to do with him and, and how it was going to affect him and all that stuff. My son is the only thing in my life that I have ever really cared about. More than anything. I love Veronica when we were together, but we were gone. So then he comes to you and asks for 35000 Yes, sir. And he said what that was for? Well, he said he was going to try and get out of the country. But, I mean, did he say what you would have been giving him 35000 for? You've had his conversation. No, sir. No, sir. But at that point, I understood what he was asking when he asked. There's no doubt about that. He was wanting to get away. He said he had a friend in Atlanta that could give him a whole new identity. He was going to be gone. That you all continued to talk. Yes, sir. I did. And you met him at Home Depot, spent two hours or something with him. Shopping, yes, sir. So you go shopping with a guy that's killed your I son's went. mother. Is that what you're going to tell the jury? 
I hate to say it, but yes, sir, I did. The only way you were relieved, evidently. What? I wasn't relieved, and I haven't been relieved that she's gone yet. It hurts every minute I think about it. And, and it hurts because it hurts everyone around that I can think of. There's so many people that this has affected. And that just, that eats me up. It is, it is killing me. I, I'm laying in there, and I'm going, my God, how many people? Last night I started counting off people that I know that this affected just immediately. Was that the last conversation you ever had about it? Was the thirty-five thousand? Well, other than what we just talked about, what was happening to us? I mean, well, I don't know about that. I mean, you gotta. I mean, he knows what he's been told, and he's kind of like me. You know, we're kind of operating, and he doesn't know. So. Well, we. Well, I mean, we talked like he would ask, and I would kind of tell him what was going on. But uh, did you all arrange with somebody to make your bond, both of you? We made arrangements for my bond, yes, sir. I mean, before you were arrested, did you? And no, Corey? sir. I don't know what Corey has done. I have no idea what Corey has done. I tried. I tried to go as usual as life could be. And I, I know it sounds funny, but I didn't know what to do, what else to do why until it played why out. Have, to call you. I have no idea, there, sir. I have because no idea. She was wanting. To hide out somewhere, and she wanted somebody to make her bond. She got arrested. He told her to call you. I have no idea. It's even like I when they did the warrant on his mother's house. They said they keep the door. I called his mother a number of times, trying to reach her, saying, "Do you need me to come over? Do you need some help fixing the door and that kind of thing?" I didn't know what to do but to try and be as normal as I possibly could. I just didn't know what to do. And the reason you didn't go to the police and say, wait a minute, this guy, we were joking around, this guy told, called me and said he killed my wife, now he wants to be paying $35,000. every minute I could possibly have to hold my son. Every minute that I possibly could just to do it, nothing but hold my son. That's why I tried to maintain normalcy and keep the status quo going. What, I mean, what happened after? I mean, the, the whole period afterwards, Corey, conversations, I mean, I don't know Corey. So I don't think it's a good thing. But well, Corey was gone for a lot after the actual, after Bronco's death, actually. He'd come around for a little while, then he'd be gone. He didn't really work with me, but he'd just come and go, come and go, which I know... I mean, I've seen enough TV shows and things to, and all that. Well, you just told us he worked 25 hours, which you? No, no, before all this, other, I owed him two weeks previously that he'd worked and helped me for about a, a total of about 25 hours. Corey came and went as he pleased. He told me, can I just work, hang out and work with you? And I said, yeah, I'll keep you some money out for what you do. And I probably paid him, you know, two, three, three hundred fifty dollars $350 a week, depending upon what he did and what he accomplished. What did he tell you about what happened? How did he tell you that it went down? I know you talked about that. That's he started briefly, and I cut him off because I didn't want to know. What did he say briefly? He, he just said that he went in the house, and she tried to run, and that he shot her. I don't know how many. I mean, he never told me how many times or anything. I didn't know that until the morgue told me how many times she'd been shot. Or not the morgue, but the funeral. But even before that... How did he find her? How did he know where she to pick her up to pick up the trail? At? I mean, same place every Sunday. We meet the same place exactly. Was he Corey knew what we did because no, he's never been with me. But he knew what we did because I mean, I told him even that morning. I said, hey, you know, I'm going to get back now. How did he know where she went? He goes to church, and we all went to church, and that's where he goes to school and everything. So you talked. I mean, that, that was morning. even before these other conversations. That particular morning, you talked to him, and you said, hey, I'm going to pick up yes, my I, boy. I, yes, sir, I'm on my way. He was telling me about this date he had, and we talked about the boys going to the movies. And he if made we no, could. no told sir. You nothing about what was going to happen. No, sir. You, you clearly up. told him where you were going. Oh, absolutely, yes, sir. And so you go pick up your son, and you leave. You didn't see him. Did you see him around there? No, did sir. Did you see him in passing or anything? 
We uh, went, and the last thing we saw was my son and I went down Broadway Parkway, and his mother was going on the ramp going to Ford. Well, you got to tell us what time and where, because... Oh, well, that was right at, I mean, I guess she came over maybe you just before Ridge 12. Stuff? Are you in no, this was, Ridge, or are you in Thompson? Well, she just dropped him off, and she usually did quarter to 12 ish, 12 ish, depending on who she I thought you were talking about. Are you talking about Veronica? I'm talking about Veronica. Veronica. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, that's awesome. She was mother's right. Was right. Well, I was didn't know if you were talking about Corey or. So you pick up, you pick him up, and you take off, and she heads her way. And we actually, you know, she was curving, and Benjamin saw her. We couldn't be better. She was halfway down the ramp. You never saw Corey at no, that point. No sir. So and we went straight home to the grocery store on top of the hill and reached out and picked up milk. A couple of six packs of Cokes because my mom drinks Cokes at the Glenner style and I believe some bread. And you had receipts from other places you were at too. Well, I had that one because it was just there at the house with the groceries on the count. And then I had one where at about 1 30, 2 o'clock, we had a toilet upstairs that was running. And I went to Springfield to the Lowe's to pick up a new tower to try and fix the toilet. That's not where I've been. And I had that one because it was just kind of sitting there too. Well, I mean, I've got a box full of receipts from everything. I've got a box full. Since the divorce started, I've got receipts all over the place. They're sitting on top of the dresser top. There's a box full of receipts from everything. So when he, so, so when he's telling you uh, about what happened, did he tell you he, did he say he saw you pick her up? Saw you pick no, her up? Sir. No, sir. He did just you? told me that she put up a fight. Why? And he, and he shot her. Was he saying about anything else? I mean... That he didn't tell me I anything mean, else about it. No, I mean, I'm just, talking about as far as his conversations and stuff that you, I mean. No, because at, that point, I just, at that point, I just said, it's done. Don't ever mention it again. I didn't want to hear nothing. Did, what did he say? I mean, did he say he ever, do? Well, I mean, was he, well, I mean, did he I'm sorry. mention his record or that he, he was somehow a criminal? I, I don't, I mean. Well, I, I mean, I've heard stories over since this has happened that he'd done some other stuff, but he'd always gotten into trouble. Before that, I didn't know it. I didn't know this was a Sunday. If you're going to pick up your kids, yes, you're sir. going to have your son with you. Why on earth would he call you, gosh, what, 10, 12 times? In the morning? In the afternoon? Well, I think we only spoke like four times in the morning. And like I said, only four. Well, I don't have anybody calls me four times on a Sunday. We do all the time. I mean, I speak to him and I speak to Why? some other. Well, I mean, he was telling me. I didn't talk to my four. wife. Like, Corey, I didn't talk to mine either that way. Corey is a player with the ladies, which everyone's already noticed. Corey had the ability of telling me these stories, and, you know, my life's pretty plain. So he liked to tell me because, you know, I'd go, oh my God, listen to that. The stories about how you get two girls at once, or how you, whatever. And that's what he called. He told me about two girls he'd met from Bowling Green that night, and was kind of giving me the lowdown in the story on that stuff. So then he kills your wife, then he calls you back, says it's done. Yes, sir, he did. And then you all talk several times after that, and the next day you text each other, you do all that stuff. What were you talking about after he says it's done? And you've been notified, I guess your wife's body's been found. I don't remember speaking to him after that conversation again no. that night, though, to be honest. I, you know, everything at that point was just kind of really weird. And that's when... Crumby and those guys picked me up and we went and talked. And I was there until, I think they dropped me off at home maybe 11-ish. Again, when they followed me back to the house. Plenty of time to tell them exactly what had happened though. Well, I was, to I don't... Tell, to tell Crumby and them what you already knew. Yes, sir, but I was scared to death and didn't know what to do. <clears throat> And it's like, I'm, I hate to say it, but I'm sitting here now, after you showed me all this stuff, my first thought is, I'm telling you something. He's got friends on the outside that he runs with. What if they're just like him now? He's been to my house where my mother is. He knows where my son is. He's I'm done. sitting here and I'm going, okay, he might, he might not do anything. Of course, he's in jail. But I'm sitting here thinking to myself, what might happen now at this point? But I had told enough half-truths not knowing what to say. 
that I can't do it anymore. So you're saying you never paid him anything? If right. it wasn't for work, he didn't get anything. No, how, sir. How and it was cope, never. How, how did he come up with 35000 I don't know. How do you know about the life insurance? Well, I guess maybe he just assumed. He'd asked once, and I said, I don't know, but I was going to check. So, you, so you're saying. Well, I, I'm just saying. I mean. Yeah, Corey's a player, like you put it. Corey's he, a player, and evidently he's, he's been up and down the, the thing, so he's going to understand the idea that, that there's probably life insurance involved for his benefit. Yeah. I mean, other than that, I don't know, sir, because I didn't know. And you're telling us that based on some kind of innocuous discussion you had about a movie and some other stuff, that this guy's going to go in broad daylight driving in the neighborhood. No, sir, I'm not telling you and, anything and except, tell your wife except what I can. Based on an assumption that you might have insurance and that you might give him some of it. That's what you're telling us. I'm not telling you. You can see why that, that's kind of hard. I absolutely do. Corey's not stupid. No, either. sir, he's not. He, he may be a lot of things, but he's not that I dumb. don't believe he is either. Corey's done an awful lot of things that I know so. of that he's not stupid. He's got a couple of degrees I don't even believe. I don't even have a degree. But I'm just, this is, I mean, I have told him enough things, and after speaking with you alone, the three, I don't want to put my family through a lot of stuff. They're going through enough already. Yeah, they're going to, they're going to go through lot. some more. I agree, absolutely. And, you know, uh, and I am the cause of all of it at this point. Yeah. No matter what happened, I'm the cause of it. Well, his phone calls will be monitored in jail. You know, there'll be all kinds of <clears> stuff <throat> done. I don't know if he's got clout other than he's shooting his mouth off. We haven't seen him running with a lot of bad people or anything like that other than abusing women. That's his thing. Has he told you, I mean, in that, uh, other stories and specifics please get into them because I don't we didn't is he no I, I don't really have specific he said that the, that at some time and this has all been since the death that I mean, the, the that cops were hot and heavy Marty talking to him I mean well the cops were hot and heavy on him for some things years ago that they couldn't find him guilty of is what he was telling me because I was going why are they after you so strong and heavy in the very beginning and, I, and, and again, that sounds weird, but I didn't want to believe it was him, no matter what, at this point still. I truthfully did not want to believe it. But you just thought it was coincidence that he calls you up and says it's done the same day your wife's murdered. I, I know it sounds weird, but if you were in my position with everything that was running through my head and my concern about my son and all that stuff, yes, sir, things don't make clear sense all too often for days. Damn, and by not, that point, I was so far into this, I didn't know what to do and how to get out of it. And after, after uh, he came and said, I want $35,000, I'm going to go change my identity and go to Atlanta and do all this crap. And you say, no, he didn't threaten you, your family. No, sir, he didn't. He just walked off and said, well, I guess I made the wrong assumption. No, sir, he didn't. But, I, you know, he, he never did that either. He didn't threaten me, he didn't anything. So why would you be worried about him putting him in the mouth? Because I didn't know, well, again, it doesn't make sense. I didn't know he was as bad as what has been presented to me today. Oh, yeah. He knew he was pretty I, bad. When he came and said, I want $35,000, I ran in and fought with your wife right. and chased her down and shot her in the head. I know it doesn't make and sense. Killed and it her. sounds you said, stupid. Well, hey, let's I go, agree. Let's go shop it at Home Depot. I agree. I know. Let me talk to you. I want to smoke a cigarette. I want to smoke a cigarette. I have one for January. They're getting everybody. Let's talk for a minute. Okay. I mean, just maybe you can leave us in here. Okay. We'll cut it off. What's important to understand here? He needs to talk to you like he, he talks to me. Okay. I'm going to if we can if I can just stay. Well, let me, I understand let me the take. severe consequences of everything I'm looking at here. Okay. Uh, I may be stupid, but I've advised him fully on that. He knows that this isn't. You know, you know, what I find is that this job sucks. I mean. I made this statement before that my son needs everything. Right. And he should. I know now I'll never hold him again. My arms. That's not true. We'll be able to meet with him so. Who would want to be with me? Your son will. Corey did this, nobody pants your butts. I know it. We did not talk about money until after it was done, as I said. 
we had talked about it before, where he told me that he had followed Veronica on two other occasions, but he'd never done anything. I love Veronica. She'd take everything from me. Sixteen years. It didn't matter what I did, it was never good enough. When I called her, she looked me in the face and said, of course you're on my side. You'll have nothing. When it was done, I had nothing. I had nothing. Then she tried to take my son. We worked through that. We got through that part. But a couple of times she made the comments that she would take him and I'd never seen him again. I hadn't heard him in a while, and that's why the wording was the way it was, that she thought it was best he stay here and had sent me over a case that he had tried where they said, you know, they needed to stay here and they couldn't go. I never believed anything she ever said. I called her bold face with her boyfriend. And she came to me when she walked inside and lied to me right there face to face. I never believed anything she said. I had always, always hoped that something would happen to her. Not that somebody would actually kill her like this, but something would happen to her. So that it could just be me and my son. We talked about the crisscross kind of idea, that whole thing. I couldn't kill anybody. If I could, I would have killed her the moment I caught her doing it again the second time. I couldn't do it. He told me twice he'd fought. Didn't do anything. Inside, I still hoped. But I didn't believe it. You're there twice and nothing's ever happened. Why did he tell you follow? Because of your discussion you had about killing him? Yes. Okay. That morning we had talked and went face to face, in fact. He knew where we were going to be. Okay. I still just thought it was him just mouthing. But to be honest, even though we were getting along, he stopped. I had this new girl, and we were getting along so well, and every time we were to the point to where we could go somewhere else and do the next step, she did something to drag it back. Her divorce should have been done forever ago. And I finally thought we were there. But I don't know if we were going to be there or not. People had told me she wanted to get back together. I didn't want to. I didn't know what was going on. I still had a hope this much that something would happen to him. Unfortunately, Corey did it. I feel terrible about it. Even though I had hoped when it's actually done, it's terrible. My son loved his mother. Whether I did or not. That afternoon, he called and said, it's done. That's when I said, I can't talk about it. And then it was real. I didn't know what to do. Shortly thereafter, when we talked, and again, I said it, and it's the hardest thing maybe to believe. Even though I wanted it done, and the little piece of me that did, I was so shocked still that it was done. I didn't know what to do but be normal. I had to, I thought, for, for myself. If I fell apart worse than it already was, it wasn't the work for me. Afterwards, he told me, which I mentioned that the cops were hot and heavy on him for some things previously that they could never prove him. He told me there were homicides too. Was he specific about those? He didn't tell me. He said at one time they thought he was the biggest dealer in all of Tennessee and all this stuff, and it was some stuff intertwined to that, and some other stories about things he'd done. Uh, right. Did he ever tell you he'd kill anybody else? Oh, yes, sir. Those two murders, in fact, he said, yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't know, but the fact, that point, him saying, yes, I did it, and I got away, 
made me start to say, okay, okay, I don't know what to do. I don't want to go to jail and deal with my son. Stay normal. Maybe he is smart enough that if he did it, he'll get off. I didn't know what to do at that point. I was two hard places, not even a rock in a hard place. I had wished and hoped, and it came true, and then I didn't know what to do because I didn't want it to be true anymore. So I stayed normal. And I know it might be hard to believe, but I had nowhere else to do. Well, you all text a lot that morning at 7 in the morning, didn't you? Actually, not as deal about. Okay, explain to Tom why you, you didn't, uh, about the, like, why you don't believe some of the things perhaps Crumbies told you or whatever, why you don't believe that to be true. Well, there's lots of things. Well, I mean, I mean, what was he driving when you talked to him? When I actually met him that morning, he was in Escalade. He was not in the Escalade. So he wasn't in the Escalade, I promise what you What was that. he in? The van that The what? A van that A small little where town. What, where where, where, where are y'all at? I mean... We went on Broadway Park way close to Interstate 24 when we met. That morning? That morning. He said he was in town, where was I at? And I said, I'm at the market getting a drink right now, getting ready to pick so he rode by there and we chatted and talked. About? Well, we just kind of chatted and talked. That's when he first broke into, you know, some more details about the girlfriends and all. So he was in the van? Yes, sir. He was in van, in fact. Okay. Um, Did you ever see the gun? No, sir. But, uh, and then he called afterwards. I mean, I didn't even see him following Veronica. If he was anywhere nearby, I didn't. How long was it from the time y'all left to having that conversation? Oh, I was probably there waiting another 35 minutes or so. Because, excuse me, the girl I stay with, she goes to church. Church starts at 1030, and it's just right down the street from her house. So I probably would have left there 10 or a quarter after 10, which is in, um, at considered Ashton City, but it's between Jolton and Pleasant View, they're on Old Clarksville Pike. So what, a 30 minute drive maybe into town, no traffic on Sunday morning, just going straight out and then I probably parkway to pick up, which I do every Sunday afternoon. I'm with her Friday, Saturday, or Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, sometimes even on Thursday. So we went out and uh, Corey was there. Corey was sitting. But uh, at this point, it, you know, a little piece of me still hoped. I don't know. I didn't know what to do. I was, I've just, I've been so angry through all this stuff. With her. Even when we were getting along, she would still lie to me. And I could never get past it. And then he told me he did. And then I didn't know what to do but be normal and hope and pray that he was half as good as he thought he was and he could get off. Because if he got off, I felt I had a chance that I might get off. And I pray to God every night, and I already told him, I know at the end I'm getting my due just. No matter what I do, I'm going to hell, I know. Well, you're doing the right thing. You really are. I'm trying to carry this out any further for everybody concerned. My family's suffering. I can't let them bankrupt them and stuff like they would to try and get me out. There's enough stuff that you said that's true, and there's enough stuff that you well, said that's not true that I know. There is a witness that saw silver. Now, she didn't say it was his escalator. Well, know, I believe that. I know. And I didn't think you'd be stupid enough to drive it in there like <clears> that either. But, uh, I mean, there's well, not a neighbor. Twelve thirty on the It's the biggest party that I know. I mean, good God. I know. Eating on the back porch. But uh, there wasn't a neighbor that saw me the day before either. There wasn't. Well, no, sir. I mean, that's not a lie. You said it. I've seen the police report, and that's all really? I know. I have an interview. Oh, well, there was no way. Sometimes Never. when you talk to them, like they say, oh, right. maybe it was a week before. I don't know. I haven't been, all I know is right. that I been they, they didn't four weeks before. They didn't make that up. They, right. okay. There's a person who said they thought I maybe was it was somebody say. else. Hell, maybe it was Corey. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you mentioned earlier that Corey had actually gone to the house. I never knew he'd even gone to the house before. He told me he'd never been to the house. So it's important, you know, now that you're coming forward, that you tell us the whole truth because your value as far as getting any consideration is a witness. 
I mean, I, that's Honestly, it. I understand. I asked was there him talk too, about, I told him that morning. Was there talk about money prior to that? No, sir. Not that I can recall at all. No, sir. We had the idea that, like I said, he had this guy that he absolutely hated. He absolutely hated. We took a, we took a trip to Atlanta a few Why weeks Why would he kill a guy himself? Again, it's because of the connection to, I guess, he didn't want it looking at it. Yeah. Y'all took a trip to Atlanta, is this where the guy lives? No, the guy lives here in town, but he was talking about him the whole trip a while back. I mean, like, we were going to do some business together with these jerseys and things. He was talking about all these guys he knew that would buy these, and we were talking $20,000 for the jerseys we were going to buy and split between four people designing the website. I mean, there's a... I, I won't deny the connections that we've had forever, but I still never really thought he would do this. Did he give you the... What's the guy's name? Do you remember the name now? No, sir, I don't. It was just... Ex -husband. It's, well, they're not ex. They're married. Her husband, it's her husband. We know. And they're in court. Hmm. But I mean, he told me stories afterwards about how he got off of all this stuff. And I started to buy into it that maybe there was a chance that if I just stayed the status quo. And she told him you would do the husband if he did your. Well, that was long before all this even this happened. That but then he came and you said, I followed her twice. So he was obviously following up on her. Oh, yeah, and when sure. you saw him that Sunday, you knew what was going to happen. I had a feeling, but I yeah. still thought maybe he was just bull****** like he was the other times. Again, like I said, I, it sounds terrible, but when someone takes everything from you, it's the only thing that matters. I do mind, it just was nice. What more did you tell me that that morning? Did you say it was a market who met it? Down the street. There, one of the fathers of church, I believe, owns it. It's, uh, if you were getting off of 24 going towards the school, it's the little first market right on the right hand side, like maybe 100 yards up the road. I don't know, maybe it's a shell or something, I think. But I stopped there every morning to get drinks and when we go to school, take them to the school. Did y'all go inside together or was it all no, the time? No, in the parking lot. Did you get out? Talk in the parking lot, no. side by side, or we were in the, in the vehicles. Okay. Just pull up and talk. Yes, sir. What did he say? Again, he was just kind of BSing about the night before with the girls and all that kind of jazz. But you knew he was there for a purpose. Yes, sir. Or well, well, I I figured. Yes, sir. I felt. You know, but I didn't feel the need to talk about it. You didn't talk about it at all. He didn't say nothing at all about it. Well, we talked about where I was going to be, which okay. he knew then she'd be there. Okay. So you told him where you were going. To be. Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. And then afterwards, he called you, I think, four times that afternoon after he did it. You I didn't talk to him but the one time when he made the comment, and then I never answered the phone again. I don't look. I'm almost positive I did. He did called he, an awful lot of times, and I never answered the phone. Did he? Uh, did anybody else around when you all discussed this, or anybody know about it? No, sir. You too, you think? Not, well, uh, again, you're talking about he was showing guns to everybody who knows. Yeah. I don't know of anybody else. To be honest, most of the time that we ever talked about anything was was just he and I. When he asked the thirty-five thousand, what did he say when you told him you didn't have it? He really didn't say much of anything. Did you tell him you hadn't gotten any insurance yet? Oh yes, sir. I said there is no insurance. Well, you knew there was insurance. Well, no, no. I told him there was no insurance. I mean, I'm primary suspect. They're not going to release anything to me. I mean, that's, that's the part I don't get why he would have thought, if he was this guy that did this or was this kind of smart guy, why he would have thought insurance was going to be released to me. Was anybody with him that morning in the car with no, him sir. on that? Or did he talk about anybody going with him to her house? No, sir. No, sir. There was somebody who was talking to him on the phone, but again, I don't really know what their conversation was. While y'all were together. While we were together, to yes, sir. Else on phone. He talked to somebody you else. You don't know who that was. No, sir, I don't. Do you know where the mattress is? No, sir. He kept talking about a mattress. The only mattress I knew of, and he actually took pictures of it and had it in his phone. Yeah, yeah he shot the gun into it. No, that's not the mattress I'm talking about. Oh, no, that's not. There was a mattress just a few weeks back before this happened. His mama had been living in a house with no drains at all in her house except for one bathtub drain, and it was slower than Christmas. I went in and I replaced all the drains underneath the house floor. Corey and I did. He'd hand me yeah. stuff and I was doing all yeah. the work. As we finished up and were leaving her house, she said, oh, can you help me get this mattress and box springs out of her room? That they were bringing a brand new set. She'd finally gone out and bought a set. It was the 
oldest, most rottenest, beat up mattress I'd ever seen. And box springs. I mean, they had holes in it that big where the springs had come through it. Yeah. That's and we literally took it out and laid it on the back porch. If, if you saw the patio, I don't know mm -hmm. if you've seen pictures, but there's stuff stacked everywhere. His mom was a hoarder. That's why I took a picture. He said he was going to send it to that hoarder's TV show. Other than that, I don't know about any mattress. Mm -hmm. But I do know that because we've seen copies of the warrants that were served, they were asking for a mattress that had bullet holes in it. And I was going, if that's the one they're talking about, not that I'm aware of, but there was all kinds of holes in it, but it's where his mom had been sleeping on it for 50 years of her life. Well, he may have just saved it on his phone and thought that's what he He didn't show you that gun that morning? No, sir. He didn't talk about how he was going to do it? No, sir. And after it was over, the details he gave you about what happened? He didn't. None at all, other than he, he, he said it was done, and then he tried to tell me that she ran and said, and I told him point blank that I don't even want to know. Which and I don't even think, I think that was a face to face meeting, and at that point yeah. I just said, I don't even want to know, and I got to know. You said he said that she ran and he shot her well, he, earlier. Hey, he didn't say, well, this maybe he said he shot her. He said she, she tried to run, mm -hmm. that she put up a fight. And I said, Well, I know she did, damn it. And then I think he said, and then she, he shot her. Okay. That that's, I'm not trying to put words I, I don't. Know. I think that's what you just said. I, and I may have. At this point, I, I don't remember that. I don't remember exactly. But he tried to tell me, and at that point, I just cut it off. I didn't want him to. But he did acknowledge that you shot her. I believe so, yes, sir. What did he say he did with the gun? I have no idea. Afterwards. I have no idea. Those are the things, when he said that, I said, I don't ever want to talk about it again. I'm done. I don't want to know nothing about it. And the reason I said that was, to be honest, was then I knew eventually I would end up here, right off the bat. <clears throat> if I didn't know something, I couldn't tell a lie about not knowing. What did you discuss about what if the police come to you? What do you say? I would say exactly what I did say, that what I was at home with my mean? family. I'm, not say I'm saying, what did you and Corey, you had to talk about, okay, this is done. Oh, I just told him point blank that I was going to say exactly what I had done. I mean, I was at home. I was with my son. I was at the grocery store. I mean, it's... And is that, did you do things specifically? No, sir. No, sir. Every Sunday, after I was gone for the three or four days span, my mom would be out of Coke. My mom is a coca -holic and has been my whole life. You get her a six-pack, it's gone in a day. You buy her a 12-pack, I buy them by the case for her, in most cases. That's one of the first things she calls. Are you coming home? Can you pick me up some sodas, some Cokes? So no, sir. The, the stop at the market was our Sunday routine, whether it be Publix for us to get things for him for school, whether it was, you know, drinks, just drinks for her because we had food. No, sir. It was a regular routine. Sunday was grocery store day. Well, what about the specific text messaging the next morning, or that that next morning where allegedly he finds out through your text that she's dead? He texts, good morning, and you say no work today, Veronica's been killed, I right. said, oh no. Again, at that point, to be honest, and it sounds weird, but at that point I still didn't want to believe that he'd actually done anything. He'd already been out twice, supposedly, following her, nothing had happened. I truthfully just didn't want to believe it. And I know it's impossible, but even though I had partially wished or had hoped, the whole time part of you doesn't want it to happen to and they were conflicting with each other. He called you up and said, it's done. You ought to talk about him doing it. He'd followed her twice. You saw him right there. Yeah, but we didn't talk about it all at the same was, time like that. She was dead yeah. within an hour. But we didn't talk about it all at the same time like that, sir. I, 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 it was not in that kind of order there. But if I understand correctly, the bottom line is, through all this different conversation, bits and pieces here, y'all basically made a deal hoped. that you were going to kill somebody for him, and he was going to kill. Well, no, sir. We we had ruled that out too, because I told him even before all this that I could never do that. I mean, it was kind of one of those things that was said partially in jest, partially not at a moment of something. But I told him point blank, I couldn't kill nobody. Well, then what did he ask for before? Because never. If, if he never asked for anything until the time he asked for money. And that was afterwards. Yes, sir. See that? I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. That don't it don't make sense I, to me. If y'all talked about the fact that one was going to do one, one was going to do the other, and you blew it off and said no, and then he starts following her, and he goes ahead and kills her, and he he doesn't know he's going to get anything up front, Corey, I don't buy that. Corey has been involved in my life so much, and I have always described him as a pit bull. If he likes you, he's loyal beyond all belief. 
And I, I'll sit here and say, chances are, you asked me earlier if I thought he'd roll or not, chances are he's still going to hold his guns unless you specifically prove something that I've said. He's going to stick to his guns, I'm certain. Now, he may not, but I'm... He had not got any guns to stick to yeah. Well, I agree with that, but I'm just saying. <laughs> if, if you were to ask but, me before you all you showed all, this... You all met <clears throat> at yes, the sir. station. Yes, sir. Right there. Yes, sir. And you must have had a telephone conversation about where you were going to be and where he was going to be. Well, yeah, he said he was in an area uh, so coming so back from someplace, see, and I said, oh, I'm over here waiting on Benjamin. And you meet. He yes, knows sir. you're picking up your child. He knows Veronica's Yes, sir. There. And, and he's already told you he's followed her twice. Yes, sir. So, I mean, you had to know that was... I'm not... I, I haven't denied that yet. Okay. Uh, that piece of me still hoped for whatever reason just because but, of that. But he doesn't just get up on a Sunday morning and come out there to meet you right where you're picking up your child. Well, when we talked, he said he was already in the area. Yeah. So he may have already been coming. I don't know about that part, but we did meet. You and made. he knew where I was going to be. No ifs, ands, or buts. But if the man, if you told him, no, we're not going to do this. Let's get back to, the, that's where we got before he asked the question. Excuse me. Corey has always been an extremely faithful friend. If he, when he lived with us, a man down the street, Bronco was walking the dog one day and came back up. She was crying and screaming. I was asleep in the bed said that the man came out to the edge of the road with a shotgun and said, if your dog comes in my yard, I'll shoot it, and if you're in my yard, I'll shoot you too. Before I could get my pants on, Corey had already got his on and had went down there to talk to the guy. We were in New Orleans. My wife had set me up a few years back after I had been working really hard and a lot of work was going on. She said, you've always wanted to go to Mardi Gras. You need a break. I've already got you a hotel and a car. Corey's going to go with you. I've set it up. We were there in a bar one night dancing with some people, and a guy came up behind me. Evidently, we found out afterwards he'd been talking to the girl all night that I was kind of talking to, and was going to crack me in the head with a bottle, and Corey grabbed him up before I got there, before he got to me. Corey's always that type of person, always has been, and as I understand it from anybody that knows him, he's extremely faithful. If he doesn't like you, then anything's possible with him. Just don't so even would, do it be, it. would it be fair to say, then, if... If you know he's like this, then up to the time she was killed, maybe you were throwing little things out there thinking, hoping that maybe he would, but really not sure that he would, but you were feeding stuff into his mind. Well, if you listened to him, he said he hoped he would. I know, I mean, but I want to hear, I want yeah, to hear what I he know. says. Because, because I hoped he would. Because, I mean, I still feel like they're holding back some. No, I'm, no, sir. I'm not holding anything back at this point. Well, at this point, yeah, he, he, he was. Yeah, we know. I mean, we've I know. long I've since passed that. Yeah. This is the whole way. And Corey's going right. to know. We've long since passed that. Oh, Corey's, Corey's going to know that I told you everything. But you know, right now, the way it is, you say, "Well, we talked about this," and then you, he came up and said, "I followed her twice," which meant he was following through on the plan. Right. You're saying, "Well, I can't do this. I can't kill another guy." So, well, and I the, said that long before this even happened. Yeah. And that's. Let me finish the point I was making a minute ago. When Corey came up about the money, because of the relationship we have and the, and the kind of person that I believe Corey is about his loyalty, I believe that he truthfully thought that after he did this, if I got insurance money, that I would give it to him. But y'all never discussed that. No, sir, we never did. But Well, he had to know he, there was insurance. Well, you don't even know, but everybody would assume in this case. So, again, I get back to Corey's. The, the crisscross deals off. Right. Corey's assuming there's insurance. And he's just assuming, well, I'm going to risk everything and go into the middle of Sunday in the subdivision and kill this woman, assuming there's insurance, and I'm not sure there is. See, the middle. And assuming of, he's going to give me the money after I do it. The middle of Sunday is the thing that trips me out about this whole thing, too, that he do it in the middle of the day. But as I said before, he had told me that he's already gotten off on two murders. He was proud of it. Well, that's because he was a desperate man and needed money, big time. Well, see, I didn't he know that he was a desperate big, man and needed money because he showed me photographs where he won supposedly $100,000 in Las Vegas gambling, yeah. which I know you've seen the photographs of. Yeah. I didn't know how he got it. Yeah. He was a man who was evidently working as an iron worker, he told me on the other coast, which I know iron workers that make 27 to $35 an hour. You know, he had some property he bought while he was there that he was renting. I didn't know what Corey's financial situation was. I just knew that he was willing to hang out all day with me and work and not make with a couple hundred dollars a week just to hang out and be with me. That's kind of weird, isn't it? No, sir. Because I'd rather hang out with somebody and piddle around than I had not work, because when I don't work, I'm spending a ton of money. 
I mean, it's nothing for me to go to the movie theater and, and go shopping or anything like that, if, you know, when I had money. See, we've got, we've got to the fact that you and Corey discussed the killing prior to it being done. Yes, sir. That he followed her, that you all met the same morning at the exact location yes, she was coming to, where we can track his cell phone right back to where he killed exactly. her. Exactly. And stole everything, so we know it happened from there. And you know the van he was in. And, uh, but the only thing is, you think this man did this just out of loyalty, hoping to get some insurance that he didn't know whether it existed or not. And that's, that's hard to believe here. I understand. A person, I understand. A person would commit a terrible crime like this without knowing he was going to get something out of it. He wouldn't risk everything. Like I said, when Corey always needed us, Veronica and I both were always there. We were always there. When he needed a place to stay for eight weeks or whatever it was, maybe even more, and they were redoing the house he lived in, yes, of course, come stay right with us. We fed him. He never paid rent, no utilities, no nothing. He stayed with us. He was part of the family. So that makes Corey, it even harder for him to go kill Veronica, I would think. Well, he'd been gone forever. He'd been gone forever. He'd been gone forever. But the fact of the matter is, I honestly believe that's what he thought. And, and, and I'll go one step further and just say, I believe I could have given it to him if everything had gone on and nobody ever said anything when got called. When did it come up about you guys going to Barbados? He's been talking about you. After, was, as soon as I got like, back from going, Barbados with the girl I was dating, Tracy. After the murder, he's saying that you all had plans to get out of the country and go to Barbados. He said all kinds of things on his Facebook and all that jazz. Yeah. I, I've seen what he writes and every day I ask him, I can't believe you wrote Facebook. that crap. This wasn't on Facebook. Oh, well, I mean, that's this the whole thing. This was talking to people that you all were going to get out of town, get away from the police, and leave the country. No, not, not as far as I'm concerned, because I had already picked out plans for a house for my mother and my and Tracy and my son and I to live in. And this was before this even happened, too. We picked out granite. We picked out cabinets. I wasn't going anywhere but right here. Now, he was sold on the idea of Barbados when after I told him how much it, how great it was and that I'd love to go back someday and open a dive shop and that some guy had maybe an offer to buy a dive shop when I was there, but I don't have a million dollars to buy a dive shop with. And I sure don't have to credit to borrow a million dollars. <coughs> and you still say you don't, but you didn't know how much life insurance was on her? As I said before, the last pieces of paperwork that we got between us one piece of it stated point blank that we weren't going to name each other beneficiary, which is perfectly fine with me. The original stuff said that we had to keep a minimum of $350,000, <coughs> which at that point even, in the beginning, we said we would do. 10% of that would be 35000 which is what he asked. Well, yes, sir, I guess so. That's kind of ironic. It's not Well, I mean, depending on the three hundred fifty places, more. Yeah, but if it were three fifty, he's saying. Yeah, yeah, not three. But I can understand what you're saying. But well, you were going to get the insurance money if you all got away with it. There's no question about it. You got the insurance. You, not your son, because the divorce went by. Man, that stuff had never been signed. That's why. Well, but again, that stuff. There's such I mean, a motive. I understand Unwise. absolutely. Yeah. I, I, and and that's not that. And I've wasted enough of everybody's time here. And I've wasted enough of Michael's time through this whole thing so far. And that's why out there I said, look, I know that you guys were asking and saying things. Crumb and them just said all kinds of things to me that I knew were wrong. I knew they were. Well, they weren't lies. They actually have witnesses that told well, okay, that. But I'm, I'm talking about other things, too. Though. Guess, but, but, you know. but I'm talking about a number of other yeah. things in general. I don't know that they ever lied to me. A couple of times it felt like it, but it's okay. We're to the point now to where all this is going to happen. In it's not worth it anymore. It's not worth it to bankrupt my family over. And my family would do that. They would bankrupt themselves to try and get me out of here. And, and my point is, is, I know I'm never going to hold my son again. Well, hopefully your son will still have a relationship with you. Maybe you'll understand. <laughs> I wouldn't. He's with your sister. I know. Thank God. I wouldn't know what. Uh, and we've offered to get him free counseling. He, he was going to counseling already, even from the, the separation before. He's been going to, and I talked to a therapist that Brian and I went to before, and he gotten some names. 
forever and a day back that I know is still valuable. School's taken care of. I mean, believe it or not, first two or three days. The church and I know you, he says he, he's lied to me. I know when people are lying to me because I check them out. But he's admitted a lot of shit. I admit that. But, no, the church said point blank they would let him stay yeah, the whole year without hassles. He, we had that Sunday, it, the kid didn't care. Of. He disclaimed any interest in that, you know, from the job. So, I don't know if it's you know, in paperwork. I don't do that. You know, I referred him. I don't know who's doing this state and whatever. I don't represent him. He just told me to put him. So, Scott Parsley is representing And I told him he doesn't, you know, I represent him. And that, so, that was yesterday. We, I was in juvenile court yesterday. Having that's, the rights of my son turned over to my sister and brother-in-law. But that was done by the board, though. Was that my, or whenever, when it this, I mean, within the day. Believe it or not. Oh, you're right. That was harder yesterday than this is today. To give someone else, my son, a high cost. <clears throat> what about the East National House? What about the arson? I have nothing to do with that. No idea what happened there. It was the second time it had been, it had been done. There was no insurance at all on it the second time, and the first time the insurance only covered what the loan amount was that we had borrowed. I thought you got 10000 there. No, sir. We got, well, whatever. There was some property inside. That's what we got. And literally, there was some stuff there, cabinets, materials that we were using to still renovate it. We weren't completed. That's, that's it. The second fire, my friend called me that morning at my mom's in the bed. I guess it was on the second or whatever, at like 6.30. They told me, man, turn the news on. Your house is on fire again. First thing I said was April Fool's Day was yesterday, you stupid ass. What are you calling them out? And I had, and that was it. Who called me? Who's that? Do you remember? Who called me? Who's he? A good friend of mine. Those townhouses on Lishy, which are close to the, over there, right at McFerrin Park. We redid a bunch of those. He bought three or four, and I bought four or five, Veronica and I had. And we were redoing that whole little area over there. And that's how I met him, from him doing those. But as far as all the arson, so I have no clue. You don't think Corey might have burned those down? No, sir. As far as I understand, Corey wasn't even here in April yet. Corey had only been back in, according to him, when he saw me at the courthouse, he'd only been in town a few days trying to, and that's what he said. My mom, literally, when I got home, he said, ask your mom if somebody called today looking for you. When I asked her, she said, yeah, somebody did, but they didn't leave a name. I said, it's because I ran into him at the courthouse today. See, that's what's hard to believe. You just run this guy in May, and all of a sudden you're all so tight that he'd just about kill your wife. So we have always been tight, though. We've known Corey. I've known Corey, and Veronica had known him probably 13 or 14 of the years of our marriage. I mean, that was the second job I think Veronica ever had, and that's when she met him. The first one, she worked at a Hallmark store in Riverview. Well, he had to know there was insurance to come ask for $35,000. Well, by that time, you know, I, I had already made the contact to find out if there was any kind of insurance. So you, but you I don't not, no, was. no, sir. I don't believe I even told him there was. But again, I'm going back, and I'm, I'm I'm saying this, and it may be the hardest thing to believe, but I honestly believe that he felt that if everything went fine and we got off, that I would give it to him. I mean, like you said, he's a smart fellow, even though he got caught. I don't know that he would ever expect somebody to come up and just say, "Here's thirty-five thousand dollars," and expect me to be able to hide it. Right. How are you going to do that? Especially, I just you can't hide that kind of money. I mean, especially if there's an investigation. I get the life insurance even. How do I say, here's $35,000? I believe he honestly thought that he would have been able to get it when things calmed down and if we were found not guilty and not tracked down, I honestly believe that he would have. And like you I said, have given it to him? Just, I mean, part, of me, part, of me, part of me is angry as I was inside at everything she had done to me. If we had gotten off, I might have. If you weren't going to turn him in in the beginning, I think you would have. And I'm not denying that, sitting back thinking and looking on all that. Like I said, that time following when it actually happened, everything was so confusing. I was a turmoil within myself as to what to do. And all I could think about, and all I think about is while I'm here, is what is best. I'm sorry. I'm to the point now where I'm going to do what I want my family to bankrupt their thing, but my son is the only thing that has ever, once he was born, Veronica and I were having troubles already. I knew the marriage was over in January before I even caught her. And we bought the new house. I said, look, we're not in love, right? 
had an email that I sent to her. We're not in love. Why don't we just go our separate ways, be done with it, and learn to live life? No, we're still in love. She's dating the other guy the whole time I found out. After all that had built up, and it had never ended probably from the very first one, I couldn't believe anything she ever said to me. Yes. I believe if everything would have went well and she was out of my life and I had what I truthfully wanted was just me and my son. And then after that, in time, I would have married this other girl. I, I wanted to go that route, but we could never get there. Yes, tell I me, probably would have. Been. Tell me about when Corey told you that he followed her on two different occasions. How long was that prior to the murder? I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I had just a few days, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I truthfully believed Sunday when we were, when we met. I believed that he was going to follow her again. Okay. I but don't you, know that you I knew I was following her. He wasn't just following her to be following her. I didn't, to be honest. At that point, he'd already said twice I'd done it. I followed her. Yes, I know her routine. I'm like a big hit man. I know, well, you know, that's the way they work. They want to be very specific. And, and I don't know. I, again, to be honest, I didn't know if he would do it or not. I didn't. Did you ask him why he was in this van instead of his Escalade? No, sir. You said earlier you hoped he would do it. Well, I mean... I mean, is that what you said? I mean, it sounds like he's, oh, he's I, driving a different car. I mean, right. it's an indication. I, so, didn't, I, mean, I didn't think about it and all that stuff. I mean, I honestly, when he came there, I knew... Well, when he said I I've said it. I know where he was going. I mean, when he says, I followed Veronica <clears throat> twice, you didn't say, well, what in the hell are you following Veronica for? You knew what he was following for, right? Yes, sir. You, did you say, why are you still following her? No, sir. Why didn't you kill her? No, sir. But what I know that bits and pieces, nothing. I really didn't say anything. So he said, I've been following Veronica twice, and you didn't say anything. Well, it wasn't exactly that way. It was, I mean, the conversation bits and pieces were scattered across all kinds of things. But I knew, I knew inside where he was going. And like I said, that part of me wanted it to happen. And as much he, as the other he, part did. He didn't shows want it up to. right where you're going to pick your child up on a Sunday in a van and it isn't his. You knew what he was going to do, didn't you? Yes, sir. I just said that. Okay. I mean, that part of me wanted it to happen so that and I could be did. alone with my son and even though the other part didn't. I understand your motive. That part of wanting to be alone is the part that overcame and, and overwhelmed. Your son. Absolutely. Nothing mattered but him. And now I've thrown it away too, being stupid. <clears throat> like I said, you know, you you uh, being truthful helps any consideration you can get, but one of the big things is consideration is testimony. Yes, sir. So that's why it's so important this is being taped that you're telling us the truth today. Because Corey's going to know the truth. Well, yes, sir. I agree with that. And he's going to come. And that's why I'm trying to tell you everything there is that I can so tell you. That's, that's what, why it's yes, important. Sir. Anything else? I mean, it's still... He, he knows he's admitted to the crime. He said he's already... What guilty? I, I mean, I understand it. I, I don't. His, his yeah, uh, I mean, we're just trying to get together I, I, Corey's thought process. At this point, I'm not sure what Corey is saying. Like I said earlier, I believe he came with one thirty-five thousand dollars in interest yes. money. So he obviously had in his mind at the time he was going to get money from interest. And like I said, we've and always you, been close enough and tight enough. Yeah. But then I probably would have no, gave it to him and it wouldn't be outside you're, you're the rambler. You're saying there was no discussion about let's go to Barbados after we're going to get so much money, we're going to do this. No, sir. No, sir. I'd always told him that I would like to go back there. Because, I mean, like I say, Corey's not stupid. I, I don't see him committing this type of horrendous crime knowing the heat's going to come unless he thought he's going to get a big payday. He's all about money. I mean, you know that. Right. Un unfortunately, there wasn't a discussion until after the fact. And with, with whatever he's done in the past, whether he's done it or not, he made you believe he's done it. Uh, this time, he didn't even he's, make me believe that until afterwards, is when he told me the story. He's, he's, he's caught this time. Right. And no way, fans or buts. You don't know, when he sits in that chair right there, it, that he may detail things more than what you seem to be detailing them. And, I, have, and I have laid everything out there that I could be met. I told him where we were going to be. I knew what he was doing. 
I mean, he was there. But I thought about Absolutely. specific conversations about uh, there was no conversations about and, money. And if it wasn't, it wasn't. But I'm saying you don't know what he's going to sit there and say. Because if it was, and he realizes he's done, there ain't nothing he can do, because he's the one that <clears throat> actually pulled the trigger, then right. he may he may come up with some things uh, that may be truthful that is going to make you look like you still sat in here and tried to sugarcoat it for yourself the whole time. Well, he'd already followed it before. I know that for a fact because he told me where he was with him, which but I verified never, where she was. But you're never, you've never given us or said anything. You're just like these, it's just these sporadic conversations. And, you know, we talked about the crisscross. Okay, don't do that. And all of a sudden he's following her. <clears throat> I mean, I just have trouble believing you didn't have more in depth conversations about what was going on. I just don't he see shows it. up, you call him several times that morning, you all are calling, he shows up right where the location is, where we know from his cell phone. He follows her from there, she's dead, he calls you up and says, it's, it's done. done. And you said, you know, I had a hard time believing it. Well, you know, it was pretty obvious. Well, it, it's... I mean, you may have had that, a hard that, time that grasping That shock it. of grasping yeah, all of it. Grasping it. it. What, it of what really, I had done. I agree with that, done. openly. Yeah, okay. Openly. I, I'm not denying any of that. And it's been repeated enough times, I think, right but now. They were on the grace on that point, but I just a, don't... A exact conversation about what he was doing or what he was going to do or how he was going to do it. I don't believe that didn't take place. I don't see how I didn't he, know could, I, he could again, decide he was going to do this just in this sporadic stuff. When, this when we talked even, the, even earlier, I just talked, I don't want to know anything. Even the very beginning before I said, like, I can't so really tell you I want you to kill her, but I don't want to know how you do it or when you do it or why you do it. I just want her dead. Similar, yes, sir. I mean, when we talked about the crisscross, that's exactly what I said. What you said if well, remember. talking about the crisscross, that's what we talked about. I said, I don't want to know nothing about it. I don't want to know if, if you do it. I don't want to know nothing. I'll know the call the moment they come looking for me. But then you said that you way told again, them. I don't have, and like I said earlier, if I don't know something, I can't actually lie about it. But then you said you blew that off. We're not, right. We can't do it. We're not doing the crisscross. So then there has to be a point in time where something is decided. To where he's going to go ahead and do this? Well, he had said he was going. I mean, he had followed her. He had told me he had followed her. But something. But I just again, his, I didn't want to know anything. Killing. Yes, sir. Absolutely. But you needed to know when he was going to do it because you need to have an alibi, right? No, sir. I didn't want to know when he did it. And I, I knew, I knew well enough, knowing Corey well enough, he wasn't going to do anything. He knew when I had always. He always knew that I had him the same time, the same days. No ifs, ands, or buts. That stuff didn't change. I mean, and if it did change, then Corey was with me a lot of times, like all these trips up to the winery or to, to listen to jazz on Saturday nights. I mean, he was there. He was at friends' houses for dinners with us. He was at my house, you know, and things. No, sir, he would have never, it would never have crossed my mind that if he was going to do it, it would have ever been any time at all except for when he was with me. Absolutely not. He'd never put my son in jeopardy. But with all that being said, if you're saying the crisscross was off, what specifically was said between you and him for him to go ahead and do what he did? Nothing that I can recall. And, and I mean that. What I nothing. Now, he may say anything. Nothing else was really discussed afterwards. Nothing. So just because you, the basis of it is is exactly that. Well, you said just a week I before she was killed, he said he followed her twice right. and he was going to kill her. But the fact was that if it happens, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And he knows me well enough, I, I, I guarantee, like I said. But there was if we had gotten off to kill her, and you said, I don't want to know anything else. Yes. The less I know, the better. That's exactly what I said. If I don't know it, I can't lie about it. So, okay. So there was an agreement for him to kill her. And the only issue is what was he going to get out of? And, the, like, and like I said, he's been around long enough to know me as a person. I, I'll sit here and like I said already, that if we had gotten off, I'm going to say 90% chance I would have probably given him the money. And he had to know she made quite a bit of money. She was very successful. Oh, yes, sir. She was very successful. Got a house, had a car. Yes, sir. And he had to know you had insurance. Again, we didn't discuss it, but common sense would say. Well, he, he but got, I didn't even know at the point whether we well, truly had. You said, "Give me thirty-five thousand dollars out of the insurance money." Well, at that point, of course, I mean, he had said something. And I said, "Well, I haven't talked to him yet, but I know there's a policy now because the detectives had already told me there was a policy." But I didn't know that at that point. 
Honestly. It was in your, it was in your no, sir. No, sir. There was a paperwork that said that we weren't going to have a policy naming each other's beneficiary. No, but it said you would keep an insurance policy of up to three hundred. Which is exactly so you knew there was an insurance policy. No, sir. There were two conflicting pieces, and that was the last question that I asked my attorney to pose to. Do we have to or do we not? Because I don't know. Enough. I'd rather give my money to someone else. Oh, well, I understand that. But you knew there was insurance. I didn't know if she would. My, my whole thing is you this. You there was exactly. insurance from the job. I mean, well, the policy. Well, there was at one time. The amount. But it's just like they said. I had missed mine at one time and had to play catch up. I didn't know what her finances were. I know for a long time that she, she had, had told me. You knew she had a minimum of $350,000 because it was court order. Right? That doesn't mean she kept it up, though. Okay. But because you, I missed my payment because I couldn't afford to pay knew, it that month. But you knew she was supposed to have three hundred fifty thousand minimum. Right. right. Until the fact of the paperwork that came in and said but it was that actually, we may not. It was actually well, no. It, and that's the only part that I'm saying. You had to keep it. It just said you could change the beneficiary after right. your divorce. You Which meant that I might not get anything, of course. And that's what I'm saying. Oh. I didn't know whether there was policy. I didn't once know whether you, she kept it up divorced. or not. Her finances, I had nothing to know with. I, I had no idea. But that's why he kills her before the divorce is final. Because you're going to change beneficiaries for sure at that point. Of course, you'd still get the money because you don't have got it. But. Yeah, but he wouldn't know that. But how does he come up with thirty-five thousand if if this paperwork says three minimum three hundred fifty thousand? So you had to know there's a minimum three hundred fifty thousand. To be honest, sir, I have no you, idea. You he may just come up with a number. He didn't tell him three hundred fifty thousand. I want it was five hundred fifty thousand, and just gonna give him ten percent. No, sir. We never talked about that. So stuff. thirty-five thousand is kind of strange from the paperwork. The divorce is three hundred fifty thousand. You know, I, I, I mean, I agree with that. But there's, you see what we're getting at. Yes, sir. I, and I understood your I point mean, the whole time. I mean, I mean that's why I'm trying not, to do what I'm doing now. You're not going to get in any more trouble. No, sir. There is. I mean, there isn't anything. I, mean, that, I can't. I confess to doing it. I can't why, get any more what, trouble. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's why. But I'm telling you right now, there there isn't anything. And yes, if he, when he came to me, if we would have got it off in time down the road, I probably would have. I'd have figured out somehow that I could have siphoned it off. As he worked with me, maybe we'd have bought a house together. You or something. about the dream of going to Barbados? Or was that, I mean, was that just guys out there? The dream of the sale shop and all that stuff. Oh, we, we talked about that a second ago. But I mean, I don't know. You can't, I couldn't give, I mean, I'm smart enough to know. I can't give you $35,000. It's going to come up. It's going to be visible. You are. I couldn't give you literally ten thousand dollars because you don't. What, do you, what have you done for me to give you ten thousand dollars that I could show that you did something? That that's why there was never any talk of any of this stuff. None. That's why I can honestly sit here and say when he came to me after the fact so was you're done. You're saying he just killed her out of loyalty to you and hopefully to get a big. I don't payout. know about loyalty to me. I don't even know if that's the right word. But I think he felt. And like I said, I probably would have done it. When everything had calmed down and cooled down, I probably would have paid him money. And it sounds terrible, and, and I know, but all I wanted was to get my son and be able to be with him. And you all didn't have any kind of sexual thing going on between you. I'm sorry, who? Veronica and I? No. Corey, Corey and I? Yeah. Me and Corey. Yeah. There's some strange stuff on your computer, by the way, that they found, you know, by sexual. Yes, sir. I've seen all that stuff. So, uh, I, but no, sir. That's why I'm asking. No, sir. Not the least bit. But thanks for bringing that up. Well, it's going to come it's out. Come out so, uh, that's fine. But uh, no, sir. So that's that's something we have to ask. That's something. That's fine. Ask. No, sir. Uh, Never been with another man. Well, there's some weird stuff on there that indicates otherwise. But you know, I'm not. I hadn't reviewed all. It's not really that important to me, other than right. what your relationship is with Corey. Of course, Corey's defense team will probably see all that stuff. That's fine. They can see anything they want to. Is there anything at all that you can tell us now? I have tried to think of everything through the course of this day. I have I have tried to come and think of everything. Even when I sat here, when you were saying a couple of things that I knew couldn't be true, they weren't even close to being true. The whole time I'm sitting here going, okay. Maybe they don't have this whole thing. Maybe I can. Maybe something will happen. I can hold my son again. But at the end of the matter, the truth of the matter is, is I can't hold my son. And to go one be step beyond that is, my son doesn't truthfully deserve me to hold him because of what I took away from him. And in talking to Michael, there's no need in, in keeping it going on anymore. 
Yes, I, I, I wanted it to happen. Part of me did, part of me didn't, but the biggest part did so that I could be alone with my son without the interference and the constant trying to take from me for what I was trying to get in game. I wanted to move on to this other piece of life like she was able to do. That's understandable. But it's not still. It's not. I love my son. How could I have done that to him? Well, I don't think you might have argued the fact that you don't love your son, but you've just done something the wrong way. And you'll have to pay for it. I am. I'll pay for it when I die, too. So everything that I can actually think of and remember at this point in time, I told. Okay. If anything can come to mind, because I promise you, I think about it all the time. I'll be glad to tell you. But I've wasted his time, your time, my whole family's time, and they're believing me. Well, it's going to be tough for them. Absolutely. Sure. It's going to be really tough. Absolutely. But I, I think coming forward and telling the truth instead of dragging it out and then seeing it and putting them through a lot of bad times and stressing them even more than they're already stressed. Right. It's the right thing for you. You did a terrible wrong thing, but you're trying to do a right thing now to protect some people that you love, which is basically what you got left. Can I ask you something? Sure. It's going to sound like a favor. <clears throat> When this stuff is settled before it gets even worse, which it's going to get worse, is there any way I can sit with my family, detectives with me, handcuffs, whatever, as a family with my son, and be able to tell them the truth without it being here? Without being here? Without it being here. I mean, is there like the office? Is there? No, as far as. Getting or even here, maybe, but I mean, not down there in that little room where they're in a cubicle looking to a piece of glass. I understand that. We could probably set that up here. If you like, be a nice. Can you get Father Brew? Can you get Father Brew? No. I lost First respect for that man. Even well, no I mean, matter what I, I did, I just said when he allowed that funeral to go the way it went, when he allowed them to turn it into that fiasco they turned it into, no matter what I had done, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. There's a conference room here. In fact, it's a little bit nicer than this kind of area, and I think we can we can set that up for you. I would appreciate that. I really would. I mean, I think some of your family came in today and met with detectives. Uh, I guess well, they were to going to, but I don't know if they did or not. Yeah, I think they did. So I don't know exactly what mm -hmm. they. I wasn't present, so. Well, they told them a lot of other things that weren't true. Mm -hmm. And that's the lies that I know they told them. That's what hurt so bad. Okay, well, I, I don't know about that, but I think we can work with you. At the obvious same time, we have contact with you, Mike, has to figure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know. I know it sounds like a terrible thing. You're going to write him tomorrow, that. Right? Mm -hmm. huh? No, I mean, you know, we'll. Are you going to ask him? Uh, yeah, 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 obviously, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long would this thing, how long would this last, this trial, before he goes to trial? And I'm going to ask another question after you answer it that I know is the answer to already. But. It's going to depend on, uh, you know, obviously if we work out a play, it goes much quicker. Right. But obviously in this situation, we would probably want you to testify, <laughs> so we wouldn't work out a play to life you testify. No. I told him, you know, you get, they get robbery of Corey's probably career, you know. Yeah. Uh, he's so, dead. Here. You get all this time, all this time that you're incarcerated counts. Well, that's not the question I'm going after. Yeah, the only thing you know where I'm going. If we go to trial, already. if we go to trial with Corey, it could be a year and a half if we go for the death penalty because it's very lengthy. They give him a lot of time, a lot of money, that kind of stuff. Now, if Corey comes in and sees a handwriting on the wall, or maybe says, "I'll take a life without parole," it could be over fairly quickly. You know him a lot better than I do. You think he'll play his hand? I think he's going to do the way I did right now, probably. I think he'll roll. And he'll start to say all kinds of stuff to turn it back on me, I'm sure of now. But he's going to hold firm until you give him something solid. And if you come up with any of the stuff I gave you, mm -hmm. he's going to know that I told you. Yeah. He's going to start to talk. Yeah. Now, what will come out, like you said, what will come out of his mouth, 
No, I mean, yeah. I guarantee it'll be different than mine. He's, he's There's no a, doubt about he's that. He's a habitual liar. There's no question about that. We'll just have to see but, uh, what happens there. But that's why I tell you, you're the, you're the first one here. You, you've come forward and, and explained your involvement in a terrible crime and how you got involved in it, which doesn't condone it at all. Well, no, sir. It does. somewhat. It would, would I, I don't. And I'll suffer for it, I know. Uh, but my question, which I already know the answer to, it sounds like a stupid question, but there were things that I was doing. And it would mean so much to be able to finish. Like my friends, the house. I had a day's worth of work to finish their house. I don't know if I could just, I don't know if I could just spend any time with my son. I know. I know bells out of the question, of course. But if I gave everything, could we set something so I could have just a little time with you? Well, like I say, we can set something up in a conference. No, room. I mean on the outside. Uh, there's no court to approve that in this situation. I mean, and there's no chance of any kind of bell, even though I told you everything and I'm not going anywhere. And well, obviously you're entitled to a bail. <clears throat> Uh, if we decide we're not seeking the death penalty, we yeah, walk through. I mean, like, could I wear an ankle bracelet or something for box. anything? It would bankrupt your family, much, or at least it would put them in severe financial trouble. Bail's not really right. much of an alternative in this type of case. I mean, now we can work with you as best we can to let you see your family in a situation that's not right into the glass of jail. I knew the answer already, but it was worth asking just in case. Yeah, yeah I mean, this kind of situation. Uh, you know, if there was a bail, it would be extremely high. And that's what I don't want my family to do. I don't want them to do it at all. It's not worth it. I'm not worth it. Well, it's nice to man up and see people. I've seen people like the Woody Gray that's destroyed his family financially, going to trial and doing all kinds of stuff. You know, so... And they would do it. You know, I know they would. Absolutely. So and I believe even if I hadn't talked, there's still a chance, but it's just not worth it anymore. Mm -hmm. You committed this crime over family, and now you're standing up and trying to at least not totally destroy your family, which is something to be said with that. That's something you can take with you. I think that's something your family will, I think, come to realize what you did for them. But you, you could have fought this to the end two years down the road and bankrupted them. Embarrassed him and everything else. That's what I'm afraid of now. It comes out that I even agreed and said I was guilty. What it's going to do to him when it's all over the news and the papers again. Well, bringing me in is one thing. It's not going to be on the news. We're not going to go out and, you know, eventually there'll be discovery and stuff like that. But, you know, this state doesn't have to be filed with the clerk until this case is resolved or until there's a trial. Nobody should ever see this. Uh, it won't be on the news tonight. We're not going to release anything. So they're going to be going to talk to Cotham and get him to Mar, Kentucky. So they're going to be pretty busy. But uh, I'd say uh, maybe Thursday we could set something up with your family. Uh, if that, whatever Mike's schedule is, what to do. If we do it in the afternoon, which I think would probably be best for their schedule. You know, what do you think, Tim? I know after school. I don't know what uh, Shane's schedule. And you know, if you want to have your son brought up here, you can do it, or we can bring them at one time and let you meet with your son. Uh, I'll talk to you. I, they got to make all that calls anyway, so. I don't know if I can even tell them. I should. I don't know if I can. Well, the 48 hours will give you a little time to get more composed, I think, and think about what you need to say. And I don't want him to see me this way. I can't even talk to him on the phone, Harvey. Because he's so we upset and cried. About the clothes, just, just uh, give him the kids now. Yeah. I mean, we can obviously, I think, take the handcuffs off as long as we've got you. you know, it's going to obviously have to be the police right. officer. Uh, again, this stuff I understand. So I mean, I'm not. Whatever, At that age, they, whatever you could do to help me. No, I know I'm um, over here asking for stuff that I don't deserve, but. Well, I mean, they can, I mean, it'd probably be crumbling them. They would have to I, I don't care. 
have to have guns covered, and it's not like they're going to be parading around. Whatever. I mean, we can we can work with you. That's. He's probably going to get me out of the truck. All I could say the whole time they were under him was, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. I told them they wouldn't come get me one day. They said they'd follow me all day. I was alone all day long. They could pick me up at any time. Why did they wait for my son? Because we were actually doing some things on here in Kentucky that we had to wait. We wanted to rest both of you at the same time. It wasn't time in a your son, it was waiting on things to happen with him in Kentucky. He said they called me all day long. They've been calling for several days. I'm in agreement with the guns and stuff. So, I mean, well, you know. You got to do what you got to do, though. Right. After they got to run out with a gun and start shooting people, too. That's right. You know, nobody wants that to happen. But I don't think Tom would say to you that he told them to make sure the kid was in the car. It's just, no. Oh, they, no, no, they no. really don't want to do that with the, well, the marshal point line. blank. I mean, the marshals were really good. Everybody that I spoke to was really good about all of them. It just it freaked him out a little. When he saw the gun coming up behind it, pointed at the window. And, I see, and, and this guy hollering, call Tim, call Tim. And we didn't know she was going to call you, what she was going to tell you, what she might. You know, so that was why the takedown was almost. Once that happened, bam, it had to go, and that's what the marshals. Well, I saw them. That's when I pulled off the road with my blinker and put it into a big parking lot to make sure there was room for everybody involved. Back. They have to protect themselves too. So. I don't. I don't. They were good. They were good to him. They calmed him down really quick, and he came back and talked to me and told me what they'd done. No, I don't. They were good to me. It could have went a whole lot worse. They were good to me. All right. Uh, only thing, well, I'll check with Mike. We'll check about doing it on Thursday. He can check with the family and see if that works for them. I'm sorry, I wasted too much time. I just didn't know what to do. Well, you know, it's it's not easy when you're in a mess like this. Obviously, make a decision. It's going to affect you the rest of your life, your family. You made the right decision in the long run, not to put them through more than they're already going to be put through. Hopefully your son will come through this okay. But, you know, kids are pretty resilient. The thing is, is I'll never see them again. By the time I get out, I'll be dead. They'll be dead. My son will be the only one. Your son loves you. Oh, there's no doubt. And time can heal. So. Anyway, I did it though. That's what matters. I did it, so I get what I deserve. You want to give us just a second before we take you back down? Okay. Just, just give it just a second. <coughs> I'm sorry, Michael. I'm sorry. It's an incredible years. Do what? Incredible years. I'm sorry, Michael, man, to put you in this position, brother. Very recorded to this. That's fine. Basically, we're just here to kind of follow up a little bit on the statement you gave us a few weeks ago about uh, your wife's murder. Uh, I know that was an emotional time back then, and you were recalling some things, so we just kind of wanted to follow up and, and maybe talk about a few more details if you recall any of those. Just in summary, and if I say something wrong, you can correct me, but you know, based upon the last statement, you said that uh, you first discussed killing of your wife, Mr. Cotham, and you discussed what you call a crisscross killing, where, where he would kill your wife and then you would kill like, his husband. Uh, that was the first discussion you had. And then you, later, you, you said at some point, I can't do that. So, so that, that agreement was dropped, I guess, at that time. Is that right? 
Yes, sir. I mean, it was almost uh, an immediate thing. Okay. I mean, it was more of a kind of a jest than anything, but it, yeah, so. So then, after that, obviously that, that ended that type of discussion, so there must have been some other discussions. At that time, he started following your wife. You knew that. He told you he'd been following her. Yes, sir. He told me that he'd followed her. And then, I think you told us on the the day that Veronica was killed, <coughs> that you met him prior to death, <coughs> where the child was being dropped off at a store close by, is that right? Yeah, down the street there towards yeah. the interstate. And you knew at that time he was following Veronica? Uh, at that time I didn't know, no sir. Yeah. But we had met that morning in the area to where we were going to be meeting. Okay. But so I don't know if he'd been following her that morning at all. Okay, but you knew you were meeting with him for the purpose of him following her. No, sir. We he called and said he was in the area, okay. but I'm assuming past that point since this happened that yes, sir, he was there intentionally to follow her. At that Did point. he know where you picked up your child? Oh yes, sir. Okay. And he knew when you picked the child up. Oh yes, sir, because it's been the same routine since he and I've been hanging out. <clears throat> and then uh, after he killed Veronica, he called you and said it's done. Yes, sir. They did. Okay. And then after that. He came to your house sometime later and requested thirty-five thousand dollars in payment. Yes, sir, he did. And obviously, you had you had paperwork from your lawyer about the final divorce agreement. If you were to agree with that, and that had the three hundred fifty thousand dollars insurance that each of you were supposed to keep on yourself or on the yes, that's right. what we had agreed upon as a minimum. Did he ever review that with you before he No, sir. No, no sir. He'd never seen any of the papers or anything like that. Never even talked about it. But even though he knew that he, he asked for thirty-five thousand dollars, which would have been ten percent of the three hundred and fifty thousand that was reflected in the divorce papers. It would have been, yes, sir. Yeah. And that was just a coincidence that Absolutely. he had no way to know that there was a minimum of three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. No, sir, he had no way to know. You all had never talked to him? No, sir. In fact, we were, you were talking about monies and things, and we talked before, and I said there'd never been a mention. There was a mention at one time. When we, when I made this kind of, there's reference to this movie, this crisscross, this Bill yeah. from the train movie, because he'd been complaining, and, and I just, and just was saying it. After I told him, look, man, I, I was just a kid, man. When he started talking seriously about it, I said, look, I can't do that. I couldn't kill anybody. He openly at that time offered me $10,000 if I could go ahead and do it. And I just said, point blank, I couldn't do it. Okay. Other than that, that's the only time that any kind of money that I can recall was ever mentioned. And that was from him to me to do it after I said I couldn't do anything. That's the problem we're having with this, is just that he would go off on his own and start following Veronica, carry through and kill Veronica, show up right where you're dropping your child off on the day she's murdered, follow her back, kill her, and then call you and tell you it's done without there being a plan for him to say it's done. And that's that's what we're having trouble with. And if it, you know, if there's more of an agreement, I mean, I understand the crisscross thing fell through, then the next thing would go that he would, he offered you money, that you would offer him money, or he would assume you would give him money somehow if he carries this out. I mean, that, that's what we're getting at, that there must have been more, a little bit more of a plan than what you're loosely telling us. I, and, and, you know, that's not, you know, uh, uh, that's just common sense to us. That he didn't just do this more or less uh, giving you, well, maybe you know, I'm following her, I'm going to take care of this as a friend, and then demand $35,000. I mean, where do you think you were going to get $35,000? You know, Maybe from the houses I have, I don't know. Again, you know, finances is not something I discuss with people. Is that what I have? Maybe you thought I had it because I had a couple of houses and a piece of land. And but he just, uh, the problem we're having is that he would carry out this murder without having some kind of guarantee that he was going to get something out of it. He's just not going to do it on speculation that you would think, well, you're a good guy, you should some money. You said you would have paid him uh, the money if you'd gotten it the insurance you would have paid him for doing it so that's just a question he had to have some in our perspectives he had to have some 
theory on how bad he was going to get this money or why he was doing this, you know, because he was emailing prior to the murder. He was going to hit the big deal. He was going to Barbados for a few weeks and vacation and all that kind of stuff. And obviously he didn't have the money for that. So he was obviously planning once this happened, you know, he was going to get some money. Uh, and that's all we're trying to get at is what was the basis for him believing you would give him $35,000. It just appears to me there would have to be, after the crisscross deal fell through, there would have been more discussion then about, okay, I'll do it for money or whatever. I mean, it may have been his idea or whatever, I don't know. But we're just thinking there had to be more discussion instead of him just saying, well, I'm following your wife. You would say, well, what are you following for? You knew what he was following for. It, to be honest, there was no more discussion. And I, and I understand exactly what you're saying. And it still, even to this day, doesn't make sense to me the way it went. But there was no other mentions of any kind of monies at any time until that day at my mother's house that he asked me for $35,000 she could get out of town. He said, if I can get it, I'm going to go. I've got a guy in Atlanta who can get me a new, a new identity, and I'm gone. And I told him right then, there was nothing. There was nothing. And I, and I know it doesn't make sense. You never discussed it as a legal problem. I mean, y'all were tight. You were business partners. You went out drinking together. You were pretty tight. You never discussed, you obviously discussed your domestic problems with your wife, your divorce. Unfortunately, I discussed those with a few people, yes, sir. So you're saying you never discussed finances or anything like that about? Well, we had some stuff going and another little thing that we were trying to do with some like jersey type things, sports jerseys. But other than that, my finances were pretty much down the path. I didn't get into a lot of it with him. You know, the trouble that you're in. <clears throat> yes, sir. I understand the trouble I'm in. It's not, that's not going to make it any worse or any less as far as the I'm, way things are going now. I understand and that. I still, it, it's just, I just can't see how he's just going to do this without y'all having a conversation of some type after the crisscross thing for him to go ahead and do this without y'all having any discussion. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's almost absurd to even listen to that, that he's not, y'all have had no conversation. It, it's not going to change anything. I it's understand not, all that. It, you're not going to look any worse. As a matter of fact, I've already said that. As, as, as so far you basically as, already admitted your participation in the yes, murder. Sir. You've already acknowledged you're guilty of first degree murder, planning your wife's, but you talked about it with a guy that did it. And uh, you, you were there with him right before it happened. He calls you and tells you it's done. I mean, I openly admit to understanding all that, sir. That. But that's, the that's what we're trying to get at. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't get any worse if you all talked about payment. Anything. This guy's a, a businessman kind of deal, kind of. I just don't think he's going to pull something off like he told us that he told you he'd done this before. Right. So I see there's some discussion about whether he was good at this or whether you could get away with it. There, I don't recall any of that. I mean, I, I really, I mean, he always thought he was the big stuff that he could always do and he'd always talk, but no, sir, there wasn't a discussion about the money. Is there any time like that? The only time that I can recall that any kind of money was when he talked about he would give me 10 after I said, look, man, I was just messing with the crisscross thing. I couldn't do that. You know I couldn't kill nobody. And that was it. That was it. But he, he, he now, seems to know a lot about everything. You never discussed about your divorce. Finally, let him look at the, the, the uh, final order that was supposed to go down if you agreed to it and ask for his advice on that. There's no, no sir. Never say, showed him any of that stuff. And I told him we were about three weeks out on everything. Okay. We discussed that. I thought we were finally going to get it all signed. We were going to be done. He knew that I was talking to this young girl about getting married, that kind of stuff. He knew. All this other stuff, though, we, we didn't. I mean, I would honestly tell you, because I know where I'm at. And the more I can do, hopefully the better it would help me in whatever I've got. Because I know I'm stuck. I, and I admitted it, and I've, and I've made my, my peace in that. And that's what I, I pray for every night. That, you know, I'm trying to do what's right so I can, I can be punished for what I've done. Was he ever around your papers where he could have gone through them? No, sir. They were at home all the time. No, sir. He'd he never been into my room upstairs at all. Never. Did you know? Was he ever at your house when you were Well, he was at my house, but never when I wasn't there. No, sir. And he was only at my house three times total than I know of at all. So... 
Other than that, no, sir. Did he have a lawyer on his divorce? Did he have a lawyer on his divorce? Who? Uh, court, Kirk Coy. I don't know. I think he and Laura were actually married at one time, maybe. They had a child, but I didn't know they were married. I think they were married. married. Well, he was married sometime. I know that for a fact. Well, maybe she, oh, he was married to somebody. Well, so the story goes, she died. He was married a while back, a long time ago, when she died, evidently, or something. I think that's where the story went. I don't know that he was married to Laura. But anyway. And there were a bunch of calls made the day of the murder in our... Yes, sir. You, you said one about he called it and said it's done. What did he talk about after that? I don't know that we talked much the rest of the day. I mean, that's when I was trying to deal with my, my son and everything else that was going yeah. on and all that jazz. So uh, I don't recall that anything else was talked about. And then I think a couple of days later we met at work, just briefly. And at that point, I just said, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't want to discuss it. I don't want to. It's kind of like I said the first time. After he said he'd done it, and I was kind of stunned by it, I said, I don't want to know nothing about it at all. And so it's, it's, I don't know what else I can give other than what I gave that day. I've been thinking about it, and I've told him just Monday of last week that I'm sitting in the bed running it through my head again, everything that we've done. I can't recall anything extra, really. And, and I know it doesn't make sense, but... Do you think it's possible, you say you can't recall it, do you think it's possible there were some conversations that you subconsciously put out of your mind that you just have subconsciously made yourself Any, feel Anything's about? possible. But I mean, I, I don't... I mean, to sit down and actually talk about doing it, we, we didn't do that. Now, whose fan did he say it was when you all met the day of the murder? He said it was... Uh, I met her a couple of times. She'd come around some of the houses we were working on over like off Alicia Avenue a couple of times. Okay. You just knew him, her as one of his girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there is a conversation where he talks and tells her that he's discussed Jenny with you and that you all have decided that she's the weak link and all of this. Do you know what he was talking about? No, sir. Never heard any of that. The only thing he's ever told me about he talked to her and everyone in her house was going to hold the same story that he was given, that he was there supposedly and all that jazz, and everybody was on the same page with him and it was strong. Did he tell you he got the gun from his house? No, sir. The car? No, sir. Uh, that, the first thing I heard anything about the gun or the weapon was when you told me that her father had had something stolen supposedly. Her husband. Her husband. But it's the first time I heard anything about him that As far as I know, Porter's always can halfway considered me to probably be the weak link because of my son. When you saw before, did she have the same van that you saw him in when she was driving? Yes, sir. What kind was it you were talking about? Um, to be honest, it looked kind of like the Aero Stars. Short little snubby nose, kind of rounded off and squared. Maybe a silver kind of color or, or some kind of like champagne color like his maybe was, older looked aged. Um, other than that, I didn't really pay much attention to it except, you know. And that, that call, when he called you the day the marshals came in and, and he called you on the phone, what did he say to you at that time? I never spoke to him that day. You did? No, so you said that he was calling me or had told them to call me to try and warn me, but I never spoke to him. They called, you'd asked me that last time who I was trying to speak to, and that's when I was saying I saw them behind me as I was pulling over. I was trying to call my sister to say, look, they're here. You should be getting a phone call or come up to the school is what I was gonna try, but I didn't even get to get her. She didn't pick up. <clears throat> Do you think anybody else knew about this plan other than you and him? The way you're talking about it, all kinds of people may know in his part. But you don't know anybody that he... I don't know of anybody specifically he spoke to. Is there anybody at all you ever spoke to specifically? About this? About 
No. Before, during, Many people I talked to about how I felt about my wife on the days when she was being the biggest pain. Um, which is kind of how this whole conversation got started too. Did you, did you say to him, I wish she was dead, I wish she'd die? Or I'd oh, I said, I said a couple of times, I wish she'd get run over by a bus or a drunk driver would hit her or she'd pick up and move to California. So who was it that first suggested this crisscross killer? He, like, he was talking about his husband mm -hmm. being such a pain. And then just, I said, hey man, remember this movie? You know, that's what we should do, something like that. And, and he, then, he took that seriously. Well, a couple of days later, he brought it back up. And that's kind of when I said, man, you know I couldn't do nothing, and that kind of stuff. And a few days after that, you know, he evidently, she'd done something, or he'd said something to Laura again, or done something, and he said, that's when he said, look, man, look, I'll pay you $10,000 if you can do it. I said, Corey, you can't do that kind of stuff. You know I can. And that was kind of the way that went. But I'm the one that brought it up. But then he didn't follow up and say, how much will you give me to kill your wife? No, sir. No, sir. I mean, you're obviously talking about killing people. That's the thing. And the next thing you know, he's saying, well, I'm following Veronica around. Well, he said, yeah, he said he had followed Veronica on two occasions already. Okay. So he always already had a plan in motion, is he? You I knew why so. he was following, right? Um, I'm sure he... I mean, you knew she had a boyfriend. I'm sure right? since she's dead, I'm sure exactly that he was doing it. Okay. And the day you, you told us the day you met him, you knew he was following her. He was planning to kill her. Well, no. No, I didn't know that he was following that day. And that's what I said a second ago. When we met, I didn't know that he was following her. But as soon as she wound up dead, then I assumed the way you lied it, or assumed that it was that he did follow her that day. And that's what happened, exactly. When we met, I didn't know that he was following her that morning. I, I thought I would call you saying that when y'all met that morning, uh, for whatever reason you met, uh, that when you left you knew he was going to follow her. I don't recall ever saying that. But I mean, I, I'm not doubting it by any means left or right. Absolutely, evidently he did follow her. I mean, this is on a Sunday morning, right? It's on a Sunday morning, yes sir. And he, oh. he said he was, he was back on his way in from some date with some girls and you talking about it, he had two girls at one time yeah. or something like that. He met two girls from Bowling Green. telling you about it and yes, sir. you were living vicariously through him. Yes, sir, exactly uh, right. But, but I'm almost positive that you said that uh, you knew he was following her, that it was, this is the day. <coughs> I well, that's what he called you but I mean, well, well, I, was, I, I mean, agree. That, that, like I said the very first thing, that still caught me off guard. And that's why I, it, it, I didn't believe it even afterwards. It just didn't make sense. and. And I understand, and I, and I want to give you what I can to help out, but I can't give you something to... I don't recall ever really doing anything after that point or the other. It, it just, I don't recall it. And it could be, like you said, maybe. I'm not doubting that, because there's a lot of stuff in my head right now that's bouncing everywhere that I'm trying to straighten out. But as far as it goes, honest to God, this, I'm much calmer now than we were the last time, Grant. And I've been thinking about it. And I want to give everything I can to help because I know my situation. Anything I do helps me, I know that. Anything I can give you hopefully helps me somehow. I, I just can't recall it. I won't deny it, but I can't, I can't recall it. Because obviously after the murder, you all were conspiring to cover it up and to keep your story straight and do things that you talked about. Oh, well, talk I only said that why I didn't come forward and when you asked me to is I felt I was trapped all of a sudden, didn't know exactly what to do. Well, you were hopefully talking, I mean, you were talking a lot about it, weren't you? You all were talking about keeping your story straight? No, no, not so much, no, sir. Just because I didn't want, like I said the first time, I didn't want to know anything. The less I knew about it, the less I would have you to worry about it. you said he did tell you he chased her and shot her. He, didn't you tell us that last time? He did give you some details. He said, I don't want to know anymore. N no. He didn't give he, me any dick. She tried to run. He said, he said that, I think he said there was, that she put up a fight. Other than that, I didn't hear much else. And that's what the detectives told me too. It evidently looked like there had been a struggle. And I agreed, so I know she would. Absolutely. But other than that, I didn't know much and else. When was that conversation that he told you she'd put up a fight? Was that the same day? No, sir. Because I don't, like I said, I don't think we talked at all that day again, hardly. He made a call, but I don't remember really talking much. It may have been a few days later when we met at work or picking up something at Home Depot or something as we were together that way. I don't recall the exact day. Again, I didn't really want to know. 
So y'all continued to work together, and you met Home Depot for several hours. Yeah. He what didn't really work much with me at that, after that point. He hung out to pick stuff up, but after that, he was always had somewhere to go. And I didn't really get much work done either, to be honest. I'd go, but I didn't get much done while I sat there. Y'all had obviously discussed going to Barbados. You've been to Barbados. Oh, I'd just gone a couple of months before. So he knew and they told him I was hoping to go back pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And there'd definitely be a place he'd like to go and visit. Yeah, he's on the phone saying that you two were leaving the country and you're going to Barbados together shortly before you're arrested. You told me that last time, too. Is that true? No, sir. We weren't going to Barbados to get away from anything. My family's all right here. No, sir. I mean, I told him we, he'd go back with us when we went. I'd love to go back sometime. And I said, there's going to be a place he'd have to go. But to his, his text messages, he was planning to go in, in September and October. And my, my trip for October was already planned and, and going. We were going to Panama City, my son and myself. So. Well, obviously he was planning different New Yorks. Well, in this case, it'd probably be better. But you know, it's just hard to think this guy would commit this murder and show up and want $35,000 without thinking there was a basis that you were going to give him the money, that you all had some prior agreement to get the money. I mean, this is an awful daring murder in the middle of the day, driving a neighborhood, chase her into the house, shoot her. Seems unbelievable. Without some prior agreement, especially when he comes to you. First he tells you it's done, just like he's reporting to you, and then he comes shortly after that and wants $35,000. He had to have some basis, in fact, for that. Unfortunately, I mean, well, I don't know what to say. Tell me about your relationship with Corey, 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 Corey whatever. I mean, because yeah, I mean that's the same thing we've been going since day one. But I mean, I mean, as far as the true. way he is and all that stuff, I mean, I mean I, it's kind of like I said last time. The guy is loyal beyond all belief, and I think that's part of the reason that even after I said this other, it just wasn't going to happen. I couldn't do it. I was just kidding around. That I. When he told me that he'd been following, I wasn't really surprised by that still. It's, uh, he's... Well, he knew why he was following, didn't you? You didn't just think he was following. You didn't need a prior detective. Yeah, but at that point, though, when he first told me, this still shocked me because I'd already thought it was all just kind of blown off. It was just a big thing. You, you didn't say quit following. You didn't say quit following or you didn't say no, why you were following. You knew. No, sir, I did. And, I'm, you know, that, that part hasn't changed at all. I'm, I'm not changing any of that or trying to change anything I've said so far. But, uh, but it's just, that's the kind of person Corey is. If he, if he likes you, he's that kind of person. I mean, I'm not, I'm not surprised by this. Not as much as I'd like to be, but I'm not. Well, He's saying that you guys had a plan for bond money and things like that. That's what he's saying on tape. It's one of the letters he wrote to me. Yeah. Was asking, hey man, if you get out, are you going to take care of me too? And I said, I'm not getting out. I got no money. Just, my, that was my response to him. But you all didn't no discuss having a plan if you got arrested about getting out on bond? Or well, no, sir. I mean, my whole bond comes from my family, if anything. So, again, we didn't. But he was telling if they got arrested. She got arrested to call you and he'd, he'd get her out on bond. <laughs> and that's the last thing he said when they arrested him was really? to her was to call you. Well, that's what you told me. Yes, sir. That, no, sir. I, I have no way. Now, or if I had a way to get out on bond, I'd be trying to get a bond. Except I'm still sitting here. No, sir. There's, there's none of that stuff. The more you tell me that the, the more fascinating it all becomes on that side of what he thought I was going to be able to do for him. Well, you contacted the insurance company awfully early, didn't you? Like at the funeral, you talked to the financial guy, didn't you? And you were you were on the insurance pretty quick. Um, and I know you said before that the lawyer told you to do sure. it or something. But yes, sir, he did. He said I should contact it because they may have a funeral clause in it. And it's exactly what I did. I just called. 
Yeah. I mean, like I said, the funeral money came but, out of my pocket. I paid for her funeral. But at the funeral, you, you knew at that time whether there was funeral money, right? No, sir, I didn't. I paid for it. And I still don't know today if there's anything in the insurance clause about a funeral clause. I still don't know. And as far as the insurance guy at the funeral, when they saw me and we spoke, he gave me his card and said, call me because I know I've got a lot of information you're gonna need. John Russell was who that was. Because I couldn't even remember his name, but I remembered his face in the crowd. He, he told the police you came up to him and inquired about well, I was standing in line shaking everybody's hand as they came through. He and his uh, nice. wife, Terry. <clears throat> Corey's still writing you these letters saying, staying strong, we got to stay together, and all that stuff. Yeah, the last <clears throat> one he wrote, which they're dated. It's probably been over a week now, a week and a half now. Um, like I said, I wrote on the second, which or the Tuesday, which was my birthday, just, hey, you okay, man? I haven't heard from you in a while. Um, because one of the last ones talked about you know, exactly what we discussed in here, and it kind of made me nervous. And then I wrote one last night just again, hey, man, how are you? Everything okay up there? You know, trying to keep the same thing going so that he doesn't know that I have even met with you guys yet. <clears throat> There's no question Lord Cotham killed your wife. There's no question you all had prior discussions about it prior to it being done. No question he asked for money after it was done. There's no question he called and told you it was done right after it was done. No question, you met with him that morning that she was killed right where she was picking up, close proximity where she was picking your son. Right. And I think you told us you knew in your mind at that time what he was going to do. Well, I believe it, yes, sir, afterwards, especially. Just trying to figure out where he got these delusions that he was going to get all this money and he was going to go to Barbados and he was going to <clears throat> do all this stuff if there wasn't some discussion about it. Oh, she, you it's, talked about Barbados because he talks about it. He's right. never been there. The um, same place that he would talk about telling Jenny to call me to bail her out or to to do, I mean, and it's, I have no idea where he gets this stuff from. But you can see, and I'd <clears> seen previously on his Facebook before when we were working on the house, all the stuff he was putting on his Facebook was how we were partners in this house that we were remodeling and redoing. And he had photographs all over the thing on it. We weren't partners in any of the houses we did. They were ones I was doing for other people that owned them. I didn't even own those houses. Mm -hmm. um, but that was his thing on Facebook. He was this big real estate guy and we were partners and we were doing all these houses and making all this money. Uh, did he ever tell you where his money came from he put up on his Facebook? He said he won it in Vegas. Mm -hmm when he was out on the other coast. He said he won $100,000 playing one night. And, and you know, you've heard those stories before, so I kind of believe it went along with it. I saw the pictures of it, but other than that, I didn't know much about it. And when was it he told you did these other murders? Was that after or before? No, that would have been afterwards, when we were talking. About getting away with it. Well, that's when he said, yeah. And I just said, look, I don't want to know much. He said, man, I've been tried twice already, and I've gotten off twice. And <clears throat> you know, he wasn't so favorable of Crumby and in the check or whatever his last name is. And he talked about some other stuff too. Like one time when they tried to pick him up, I think I told you before about he was the ecstasy king in town or something. He tried to get busted on that, and they couldn't get him. And so he was full of pomp and promise afterwards. You were hoping he'd get away with it, right? Especially after it happened. Yeah. I wasn't, I mean, again, this is going to sound like I'm back on, but I'm almost positive I said the same thing last time. I said these things, and I, the crisscross thing, and I said, hey, look, that was just, it can't happen. It's not going to happen. Not serious. After it happened, I was in a position to where I told you, 
as much as I hated it, at the same time, part of me was relieved because I didn't have to deal with all the other crap I was dealing with. So at that point, I was to the point where, you know, I kind of hope to because I'm involved now and I hope he gets away with it. Because if he got away with it, then, you know, my, my whole concern, and I know it doesn't make sense to anybody, Well, you told us your concern was for your son. That's what drove you to get involved in this. Absolutely. That's why I kept my mouth shut and hoped. It meant I didn't feel bad. It meant I wasn't sorry. I didn't know the two of like us. He saw that. He obviously discussed it. Son. Oh, he knows the way I feel about my son, absolutely. He knows I love him, I just to death. He was there the one time Veronica told me she'd take him and I wouldn't see him again. And I think he used that to get you into this plan where he could make money by doing the killing. But he had to have some knowledge that you had some money. Well, whether you did or not, he had to think that you had money. Well, I, I, there's no doubt that he thought it. I mean, I've got three houses, a piece of land, you know. I'm, I'm working, and we're making some money on the jobs I'm doing. There's money coming in. So there's no doubt that he thought I had money. I mean, hell, I bought him lunch almost every day. And that's part of what I do with things. So, I mean, I always had something in my pocket. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, this is, I don't know. Maybe he trusted me well enough or tough enough that, like I said before, that he thought he could ask me if I could get it, I'd give it to him. And like I said before, <clears throat> if we got away with it, I definitely would have had to consider giving it to him. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds terrible, but it's the truth of the matter. She wasn't a movie producer or TV producer or anything like that back when he lived with you guys, was she? No, when he met, like I said, she worked at Beaver's Plus and Corey's cousin was Veronica's boss. Right. And that's how he met her before he even met me. But I mean, and he lived with you guys. I mean, was she, what was she doing then? Yeah, I mean, Television. But she wasn't at the producer level. She was at the lower, kind of what they call a gopher level, a PA. Ready. Production system. Right. Undergraduate. <clears throat> so, but I mean, I think he lived with us eight, ten, maybe twelve weeks at one point while they were remodeling his house over on Charlotte. I mean, he'd always been there like that. I'd always helped him and taken care of him and, and given to him if he needed something, and he was always there as part of our family. <clears throat> so, I mean, we've got a long history that would show <clears throat> that how if he needed something, then. I was there for him, and he needed me. Did you think it was kind of strange the morning that he met you over there, so he would be right in the area where you were going to meet with Veronica, that he'd been with these two women, like he's talking about everything, he wasn't in his Escalade, he'd like to flash in, and he was in some beat-up van? To be honest, I didn't really think twice about it, but... Yeah, now, of course, it does look kind of funny if you've been with him all night. Sorry, my night's asleep. I'm afraid if I stand up, I'm going to hurt worse right now. I mean, I think we're about, about finished, really. There's nothing else he can add. So. 
I mean, I'll keep thinking. I've started writing notes now, even as I, as I try to to think about things, to try and lay stuff out in my head. But I'm not really coming up with anything new so far that I haven't already given. You. I mean, I promise I'll keep trying because if well, there's something that helps, then that's what I want to do. Well, we just want the truth, and we're having trouble. That's what I'm trying to get. Understanding the contractual kind of nature of this, this, uh, this murder about. He, he meets you the morning it happens. He calls you up immediately and tells you it's done. He shows up to your house wanting money. You know, there, there just hadn't been some kind of factual basis for all that going on. So we're thinking that you have a boss to have we take, sit down with, with Cotham if he decides to cooperate. I promise you, I'm trying my best he's, to cooperate. He's not going to give us any information about any agreement you had or promise you made to him or anything. Not that I'm aware. Well, <laughs> He may tell you anything, as you oh, already know for what he says. <clears throat> I'm telling you now what I can because I know already why I'm here. That first time we met, after my two times of coming out and coming back in, outside the last time I made my peace with myself yeah. and said that it was time to come in here and be honest and tell the truth about what happened, what I did, what my responsibilities were for it. Because whether I tell you or not, truthfully, as, as you told me that day, there's a man above me. And I know that part of my life I've forgotten it that I have to answer to. Mm -hmm. And if I only give you a piece of the truth, then no matter what I ask him for, he's still not going to give me anything. So the best thing for me to do was to come clear and be true and honest with you. And that's what I've done. I, I can't give anything that's more than right. what there is. Yeah, just exactly right. right. And that's all I've done. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I, had maybe, I guess it was after the last meeting, a couple of days later, maybe, when we met, there was something, I think, that really angered you about the die pad or something like that, didn't you? Oh, well, that's what we said today when you said that he'd given his daughter an iPad. And I said, well, you know, my son's iPad is the one that's missing. If he gave my son's iPad, which my son, it's one of the things that was newest to him, his mom had just given him, he really loved. Yeah, that bugged me. Mm -hmm. That bugged but, me quite yeah. definitely. And that's one of the things that really, I'll be honest, that kind of helped that teetering piece in my head and my, in my heart that day. I said, if he took something that was my son's after all this to give to his daughters. But I didn't know. I mean, it may not have been hers. I think you said you gave the detectives the receipts, but I don't know if they even followed up on it to find out the model numbers even matched it or not. Well, they had, he promised that he never gave it to you. No, but there you go. But that's one of the things that everything else already being done to take something else away from my son. And, uh, you will to take a polygraph. Wouldn't be admissible in court, obviously, but it's something we use as a tool to make us feel better I, about yes, your testimony. I told you that the last time. Okay. Unfortunately, I mean, I'll, whatever I can to help. Okay. Because, like I said, I know what I give you helps me. Because we might want to set that up. Obviously, it can't be used against you, but it's just a tool that can be used for us to feel comfortable that this is the way it went down. Anything. And not something that cough that might come up with. And if you come up with something in that, it may be that we can go a direction that I've not thought about, maybe. I'll, but I'm to this day, I promise right now, I'm trying to give you everything I can. Well, important. I can't make my myself look any better. The yes. important question would be obviously, did you have any agreement with Corey Coffin about money for killing your wife? And that answer is no, sir. Prior, we did not. prior to the murder. That's, that answer is no, sir. We did not. When he came and asked for the thirty-five thousand, and you told him you didn't have it, how did how did you leave? Because you obviously remained friends, talked on the phone, met at Home Depot, so he wasn't totally pissed off about anything. But you, you, it's like I said last time; he was kind of shocked by it all because I think he really thought that I had something tucked away, and uh, and I told him, look, if I could get it, you know, if I had it, I could get it. I'd give it to him. Like I told you, I would give it to him. Especially if we got through. But you all left it. Were you going to try and get it for him when you sold property or something like that? That's a possibility, maybe, but I don't, I don't know for sure. That's a distinct possibility. <clears throat> I mean, because you would think he'd say, "Man, I just killed your wife. <clears throat> I want the thirty-five thousand. Now you tell me you don't have anything." <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> he wants to go to Atlanta, get a false identity, do all this kind of stuff, go to right. Barbados. Uh, but you all remain friends, remain talking. So, I mean, there must have been some kind of resolution there about the 35000 Well, it was kind of left up in the open because right now there wasn't. I mean,
Well, at that time, you knew about the insurance. So if you right. got it. Well, we knew it wouldn't come to me. That's what I told him. I mean, the moment it happened, and when we became suspects and all, when he had told me that, and I said, there is no insurance money. Well, it makes you think there's insurance money. And I'm well, primary suspect. There's not going to be any insurance money coming my well, way. Well, it's common to you. You were the heir at the time until after the divorce, right? No, sir. Well, I mean, I was a beneficiary. My son was secondary. But the yeah. moment this happened, the insurance company automatically had told whoever that I'd never see the day of light of it unless I was found not guilty. Well, you hadn't been charged at that time, so the insurance company might hold it up in an investigation. But well, but that's what I told him already, though. There would be no insurance money coming my way just because, I mean, that was common sense at the time thing when he brought it up and when he asked for the money. So um, he knew about the insurance? Yeah. Well, he, uh, well, everyone knows that there's going to be some kind of insurance. By that time, I knew about it, and he talked about it. And I said, man, there is nothing. And I think, actually, I said that last time, too. But uh, I'm trying to think of what else we might have said. And you're sure he didn't know about the insurance prior to murder? Yes, sir. I'm positive. Um, <clears throat> He may have known that I was planning on doing, I had talked to my family about trying to take out a loan on that property, that severe court property, to uh, to get some renters in there and use that money to do some renovations on another place I was looking at. I'm trying to think if we talked about that. Because that's where I was going to get the money to do the t-shirt, the sweatshirt, or the jersey thing mm -hmm. from. I was going to take part of that money out of that loan to do that with for us. That could have been where he thought it was coming from. Either. And I may have when he said the thirty-five thousand. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. I may have at that point. Even said if the loan comes through. How much was the loan for? Um, I was taking out an equity line of credit. I mean, it would have been for probably 104000 but I owed like sixty-two on the house and another ten to a family member that had loaned me some money to work on it with. So <clears throat> I was hoping to come out with like a 30000 I could pay some bills off with and then do the jerseys and stuff with it. But yeah, before that, I know there was nothing, no talk about it except for that one time. And uh, you don't think he burned your other property down so you could get insurance money? He wasn't even here that I'm aware of. He wasn't? No, sir. He wasn't even here that I'm aware of. <clears throat> Plus, the other property wasn't even insured, so. <clears throat> no, sir. Okay. I don't think I have any other questions. Uh, I'm sorry. At this time. So, we'll probably... We'll be, I think we'll probably get to write a letter about possibly moving it, and then we can say we think that's a good idea. Thank you. And uh, like I say, if you if you want to meet with your uncle or whoever, we can set that up. I appreciate we'll, we'll that. We'll probably be setting up a polygraph for you too. Okay. That's fine. All right. Okay. Just <coughs> Oh, yeah, sure. Well, well, give me just a second. That's fine. That's fine.